Preface to The Vegetarian Cookbook by E. G. Fulton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perrard. Preface to The Vegetarian Cookbook by E. G. Fulton. Why I was impressed to write a cookbook. It must appeal to the judgment of every thinking man and woman that the human family are more in need of sound wholesome advice as to what they should eat and drink than ever before the number of physicians and dentists increases each year at an alarming rate but the aches and ills of the suffering people do not lessen thousands of people find themselves in a deplorable condition with stomachs almost worn out having depended largely upon pre-digested foods and a long list of so-called dyspepsia cures the amount of patent medicines sure cures consumed by the people in the united states is enormous and is increasing every year it must be apparent to all students of the past century that the people of the present are not enjoying the same degree of health as our ancestors nor have we any assurance that things will improve unless some radical change is made disease among cattle poultry and fish has increased so alarmingly in the last few years that we should no longer depend on the animal kingdom for food we should look to the grains nuts vegetables and fruits for a better dietary than can be prepared from the flesh of animals likely to be contaminated with tuberculosis cancer and other diseases in writing this book the author has treated the subject from the commonly accepted definition of the term vegetarianism which means to abstain from flesh food but allows the use of eggs milk and its products after years of experience in conducting vegetarian restaurants in several cities and making a study of the food question he thinks he can bestow no greater gift upon the people than to place before them a book containing instruction in the preparation of wholesome dishes that will build up in place of tearing down the body in this work i do not claim to have reached perfection nor to have exhausted the category of wholesome preparations and combinations within the domain of vegetarianism in our efforts to teach how to live without the use of flesh foods we find we have only begun to discover the inexhaustible resources of the great vegetable kingdom in the boundless wealth of varied hygienic foods End of preface Chapter One of The Vegetarian Cookbook by E. G. Fulton. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter One The Hygiene of Cooking. Good Cooking. Good Cooking is not the result of accident, a species of good luck, as it were there is reason in every process a law governing every chemical change a course of medical lectures does not make a physician nor will a collection of choice recipes make a cook there must be a knowledge of compounding as well as compiling of baking as well as of mixing and above all one must engage in the real doing theory alone will not suffice but experience which practice only can give is of the utmost importance mention will be made under this head of those forms of cooking only which enter into vegetarian cooking as usually understood boiling the term boiling as applied to cookery means cooking in a boiling liquid many kinds of food need the action of water or other liquid combined with heat to cook them in the best manner and boiling is one of the most common forms of cookery when water becomes too hot to bear the hand in it with comfort it has reached one hundred and fifty degrees or the scalding point when there is a gentle tremor or undulation on the surface one hundred and eighty degrees or the simmering point is reached 
when there is quite a commotion on the surface of the water and the bubbles breaking above it throw off steam or watery vapor two hundred and twelve degrees or the boiling point is reached after water reaches the boiling point it becomes no hotter no matter how violently it may boil the excess of heat escapes in the steam this important fact is rarely understood by the average cook and much fuel is often needlessly wasted because of the mistaken idea that rapidly boiling water cooks food more quickly in all ordinary cooking simmering is more effective than violent boiling the temperature of the water may be slightly raised by covering the kettle if sugar or salt or anything to increase its density is added to water it takes longer for it to boil but its boiling temperature is higher this explains why boiling sugar syrup and boiling salt water are hotter than boiling fresh water boiling effects partial destruction or removal of organic and mineral impurities found in water hence the importance of boiling the water where such impurities exist boiling also expels all the air and the gases which give fresh water its sparkle and vitality therefore the sooner water is used after it begins to boil the more satisfactory will be the cooking fresh water should be used when the object is to extract the flavor or soluble parts as in soups and broths salt water should be used when it is desired to retain the flavor and soluble parts as in most green vegetables cold water draws out the starch of vegetables boiling water bursts starch grains and is absorbed by the swelling starch and softens the cellulose in cereals and vegetables milk in cooking some kinds of food milk is used instead of water milk being thicker than water less of the steam escapes and it becomes hot sooner than water adheres to the pan and burns easily at its boiling temperature two hundred and fourteen degrees the casein contained in milk is slightly hardened and its fat rendered more difficult of digestion by heating milk in a double boiler these dangers are avoided it then only reaches a temperature of 196 degrees and is called scalded milk. The process is a form of steaming. Steaming Steaming is a process of cooking food over boiling water. It is a very satisfactory and convenient method without much loss of substance. It takes a longer time than some other ways of cooking, but requires less attention. There are two methods of cooking by steam one in a steamer which is a covered pan with perforated bottom this is placed over boiling water and the steam carries the heat directly to the food two by means of a double boiler by this method the heat is conveyed from the boiling water through the inner boiler to the food when cooking by steam the water should boil steadily until the food is done watery vegetables are made drier by steaming and flour mixtures develop a different flavor than when baked stewing stewing is cooking in a small quantity of water at a low temperature for a long time and is a form of boiling the food loses less nutriment when stewed than when rapidly boiled baking baking is cooking by means of dry heat as in a close oven the closely combined heat of the oven develops flavors which are entirely different from those obtained by other forms of cooking the baking of many kinds of food is as important as the mixing and every cook should thoroughly understand how to regulate the oven nearly all flour mixtures as bread cakes and many kinds of pudding are more wholesome when baked than when cooked in any other way braising Braising is a combination of stewing and baking. Meat cooked in a closely covered stew pan so that it retains its own flavor and those of the vegetables and flavorings put with it is braised. Braised dishes are highly esteemed. Broiling. Broiling, meaning to burn, is 
cooking directly over or in front of the clear fire and is the hottest form of cooking the intense heat combined with the free action of the air produces a fine flavor quite unlike that obtained in any other way pan broiling is broiling on a hot surface instead of over hot coals end of chapter one chapter two of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Salads All green vegetables that are eaten raw and dressed with acid, salt, and oil are included in the list of salads, and they should always be served crisp and cool. Wash salad greens carefully, allowing them to stand in cold or iced water until crisp. Drain and wipe dry with a soft towel taking care not to bruise the leaves and keep in a cool place till serving time if they are not thoroughly dried the water will collect in the bottom of the dish and ruin any dressing used pair cucumbers thickly and remove a thick slice from each end cut into thin slices or into one half inch dice and keep in cold water until ready to serve then drain thoroughly crisp celery in cold water also pare tomatoes and keep in a cold place and sprinkle with chopped ice at serving time the list of vegetables suitable for salads is so long that the question of kind is wholly a matter of choice asparagus peas string beans beets cauliflower etc are all well utilized in salads freshly cooked vegetables or leftovers may be used but all cooked vegetables must be cold and perfectly tender by deftly combining these leftovers with the favorite dressing there is material for a delicious and economical salad to which the somewhat aristocratic name of macedoin salad may be given this salad may consist of a few or many kinds of vegetables any combination pleasing alike to the eye and the palate being permissible and if care is taken in the arrangement it may be made a very attractive dish to the dressing of salads one must give utmost care and attention as upon their excellence the success of the dish principally depends while rules for dressings are innumerable there are after all only a few really good ones the french dressing and the mayonnaise are most generally known the former being the simplest and most commonly used of all dressings and it is quite the favorite for lettuce cresses chicory and other vegetable salads as the salad wilts if allowed to stand in the dressing it should not be added till just at the moment of serving and it is for this reason that it is frequently made at the table one of the most difficult things to prepare is a perfect mayonnaise but once the knack is acquired failure afterwards is rare one essential point is to have all the materials cold chill in the refrigerator both the bowl and oil an hour or more before using in warm weather it is advisable during the mixing to stand the bowl in a larger one of cracked ice this dressing if covered closely will keep several days or longer in the ice box keep in a cold place till wanted as it liquefies as soon as mixed with meat or vegetables to tone down the taste of the oil and thus make more delicate salads one may add to the dressing just before it is used a little cream beaten stiff and dry this dressing is used with nut and fruit salads and may be used with potatoes tomatoes celery and other vegetables most cooked vegetables intended for salads are moistened with a french dressing and allowed to stand an hour or more or until well seasoned in a cold place to this process the term marinate is applied just before serving pour off all the marinate that is not absorbed and combine with the mayonnaise a mistake frequently made in preparing salad dressing is that of using too much acid 
the acid flavor should not predominate but other flavors should also have their value vegetarian chicken salad chopped protose half pound chopped celery two-thirds cup grated onion one small teaspoonful chopped nuttoline quarter pound lemons juice of two salt mayonnaise two tablespoonfuls mix all together adding mayonnaise dressing last serve on lettuce almond salad olives eighteen celery one and a half cups blanched almonds one and a half cups salad dressing lettuce stone and chop the olives add the almonds chopped also the celery cut fine mix with salad dressing and serve on lettuce normandy salad walnut meats one cup french peas one can mayonnaise lettuce place walnut meats in scalding water about fifteen minutes then remove the skins and cut into pieces about the size of a pea scald the french peas and set aside for a while drain the water off the peas and let them get cold then mix with the walnuts pour mayonnaise dressing over all and mix thoroughly serve on lettuce brazilian salad ripe strawberries one and a half cups fresh pineapple cut in small cubes one and a half cups brazil nuts blanched and thinly sliced twelve lemon juice four tablespoonfuls lettuce dressing one spoonful cut the strawberries and pineapples into small cubes and add thinly sliced brazil nuts that have been marinated in lemon juice arrange lettuce in rose shape and fill the crown with the above mixture and cover with a spoonful of mayonnaise or golden salad dressing nestle road salad red cherries half cup black cherries half cup red currants half cup white currants half cup sugar one and a half cups red raspberries half cup black raspberries half cup strawberries half cup lemon juice half cup pit the cherries keeping them as whole as possible put a layer of fruit in the salad bowl then a layer of sugar then another layer of fruit and so on till all the fruit is used finishing with a layer of sugar pour over all one half cup of lemon juice shake the bowl gently from side to side to draw out the juice until it nearly covers the fruit more sugar may be used if needed this salad should be made two hours before using and kept on ice fruit salad apples cut in half inch cubes one cup bananas cut in half inch cubes one cup oranges cut in half inch cubes one cup mix all together and serve with golden salad dressing waldorf salad apples cut in dice one and a half cups lemon juice half cup lettuce celery cut in dice one and a half cups mayonnaise dressing mix apples celery and lemon juice well together and pour mayonnaise dressing over serve on lettuce in making waldorf salad use only crisp white tart apples and the tender white heart of the celery the celery should be cut a little smaller than the apples use only white mayonnaise drain off the lemon juice before adding the dressing or it will ruin the mayonnaise protose salad protose cut in small dice one pound cold boiled potatoes cut into dice two finely cut celery half cup finely minced onion one tablespoonful salt celery salt half teaspoonful mix thoroughly with mayonnaise and serve on lettuce leaves protose and celery salad diced protose two and a half cups grated onion one tablespoonful oil salad dressing salt one teaspoonful crisp celery one and a quarter cups lettuce or celery leaves cut protose into half inch dice add a little salt grated onion and celery cut into the same size as protose 
set in ice box and just before serving pour over some of the oil salad dressing and mix all together lightly serve on lettuce leaves or garnish with celery leaves pea and onion salad peas canned or stewed four cups drained grated onion two tablespoonfuls lettuce leaves mayonnaise let peas drain half an hour then add the onion mix well set in a cold place and when ready to serve pour over the mayonnaise mix all together lightly and serve on lettuce leaves english salad chopped lettuce one cup chopped celery one cup mayonnaise one tablespoonful lemons juice of two mix lettuce celery and lemon juice thoroughly then add mayonnaise and salt to taste water lily salad lettuce leaves mayonnaise dressing eggs hard boiled eight cut crisp lettuce leaves into pointed strips like the outer leaves of a water lily cut the whites of hard boiled eggs also into strips to make the petals mash all but two or three of the yolks mix them with the mayonnaise and fill in the centre of the white petals take the remaining yolks and put through a fine sieve and scatter this over the yellow centre and white petals to resemble pollen of the flower nut and fruit salad diced pineapple canned one cup chopped walnuts one and a half cups diced oranges one cup diced dates one cup mix all together and add golden salad dressing one hour before serving nut salad apple one small lettuce half cup onion juice one teaspoonful oil of cloves seven drops salt almonds half cup brazil nuts half cup sugar one teaspoonful lemon juice of one chop all the ingredients moderately fine and mix with plenty of mayonnaise dressing tomato mayonnaise tomatoes two oil half cup onion juice three or four drops hard-boiled eggs two raw egg one peel the tomatoes cut them in halves and press out all the seeds retaining only the solid fleshy portion chop this fine and press through a sieve and drain mash very fine the hard-boiled yolks of the eggs and add the raw yolk when thoroughly mixed add the oil a few drops at a time when thick and smooth add the dry pulp of the tomato a little at a time stir in the onion juice serve on sliced protose or nuttoline lima bean salad lima beans two cups strained tomatoes one and three-fourth cups hard-boiled yolks two lettuce nut butter two tablespoonfuls minced parsley one tablespoonful salt sliced tomatoes cook beans till well done strain off the water and set aside to cool mix nut butter as for table use and thin it down with the tomato juice add the minced parsley and a little salt turn this mixture on the beans and stir well without breaking the beans mince the yolks of the hard-boiled eggs and sprinkle over the salad garnish with lettuce and sliced tomatoes and serve pea and tomato salad tomatoes six nuttoline one cup salad dressing green peas two cups lettuce peel the tomatoes and scoop out the inside fill up with green peas and bits of nuttoline place each tomato on a lettuce leaf and cover with salad dressing lettuce separate the leaves and carefully wash to remove every particle of grit shake the water off the leaves place on a plate or in a salad dish and send to the table for each to prepare as preferred dress with lemon salt or olive oil a mayonnaise or lettuce dressing may be provided for the table if preferred lettuce may be cut fine before being sent to the table cabbage salad cabbage chopped very fine one and a half cups chopped walnuts half cup 
cream half cup lemon juice of one sugar one tablespoonful salt beat cream sugar and lemon juice together then pour over the walnuts cabbage and salt which have been thoroughly mixed salad la blanche lima beans one cup minced celery one cup hard-boiled eggs two minced lettuce one cup nuttolene quarter pound boil the beans till tender drain and cool chop them rather fine and add the minced celery minced lettuce nuttolene cut into small dice and hard-boiled eggs finely chopped serve with la blanche dressing beet salad cold boiled beets hard-boiled eggs salt olive oil lemon juice lettuce arrange alternately slices of cold boiled beet with slices of hard-boiled eggs on a plate season with salt olive oil lemon juice poured over serve on lettuce carrot and beet salad carrots two lettuce dressing beets two celery arrange alternately slices of cold boiled carrots and beets serve on a lettuce leaf garnish with finely chopped celery dress with olive oil lemon juice or french salad dressing stuffed beet salad boil the beets in whole till tender selecting those of uniform size cut a slice off the bottom so that they will stand upright and scoop the inside out carefully take pains not only to avoid breaking the shell but to keep the inside as nearly whole as possible peel the shells and let them get perfectly cold cut the centers into tiny cubes using an equal amount of parboiled potatoes and white celery cut to same size mix well with mayonnaise or french dressing and fill the shells laying a slice of hard-boiled egg on top of each and serving on a bed of tender lettuce leaves turnip and beet salad turnips one and a quarter cups green peas two cups mayonnaise beets one and one-fourth cups lettuce cook both vegetables separately till tender dice and set on ice until ready to serve place a spoonful of the mixed vegetables on a leaf of lettuce border with green peas and put a spoonful of mayonnaise on top asparagus and protose salad asparagus one and a half cups protose one and a half cups salt mayonnaise wash the asparagus and cut into pieces half an inch long boil in salted water till tender drain off the water and when cold put into a salad dish with protose cut into dice season with salt serve on a lettuce leaf with mayonnaise beet and potato salad cut with a vegetable cutter or slice cooked beets and potatoes arrange on a dish alternately dress with cream salad dressing beet and potato salad number two beets one cup protose half cup onion juice two tablespoonfuls hard-boiled egg sliced one mayonnaise potatoes one cup egg yolks half cup salt chopped parsley quarter cup lettuce cut the beets potatoes and protose into small dice mix all together and serve on a lettuce leaf one slice of egg to each portion asparagus and cauliflower salad asparagus tips boiled and drained two cups cauliflower boiled drained cut in small pieces two cups dress with cream salad dressing asparagus salad cut cooked asparagus tips into three inch lengths and serve on lettuce leaf with cream dressing brussels sprouts salad put plain boiled brussels sprouts into the ice chest to get cold dress with olive oil and lemon juice serve on lettuce date and celery salad chop dates and celery and serve with golden salad dressing macedoine salad this is a mixture of any kind of cooked vegetables cover with french salad dressing and serve on lettuce leaves 
End of chapter two. Chapter three of the Vegetarian Cookbook by E. G. Fulton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter three. Salad dressings. Mayonnaise dressing. Egg yolk. One. Cooking or olive oil. Lemon juice. Salt. Sugar. One tablespoonful. Into a saucer break the yolk of a fresh egg. Add to it a large pinch of salt and with a fork stir the yolk till it begins to stiffen gradually add to the yolk a drop at a time cooking oil or olive oil stirring well after each drop is added continue this process till the mixture becomes too stiff to stir then thin it with lemon juice and add more salt the salt helps to stiffen it thicken again with oil in the same manner as before and then again with lemon juice Continue this till the desired amount is made. When stiff enough to cut with a knife, add one tablespoonful of sugar. This will keep for a number of days, if set on ice. Success in making this depends upon the care with which the oil is added. At first, a drop at a time, and towards the last, adding two or three drops, and perhaps half a teaspoonful at a time. Note. To make it keep well, add one tablespoonful boiling water, beaten in quickly. To keep from curdling, put lemon juice and oil on ice for 15 minutes before using. White dressing. Egg yolk, one, light colored. Salt, cracked ice. Cream whipped to stiff froth, six tablespoonfuls. Oil, six tablespoonfuls. Lemon juice one tablespoonful drop the yolk into a cold bowl mix lightly add a small pinch of salt then add the oil drop by drop the dressing should be very thick stand the bowl in another containing a little cracked ice so that you may be constantly reducing the color of the egg now add slowly the lemon juice then stir in the whipped cream this dressing if properly made should be almost as white as whipped cream while having the flavor of mayonnaise. Serve with Waldorf salad. Boiled salad dressing. Eggs, five. Melted butter, quarter cup. Lemon juice, four tablespoonfuls. Salt, one level teaspoonful. Sugar, one level teaspoonful. Rich cream, one cup. To the yolks, add the salt and sugar. Beat with an egg whisk until thick and light. Then add gradually the melted butter and lemon juice. Cook over hot water until the mixture thickens and falls away from the sides of the pan. Take from stove, put into a glass jar, and when cool, cover closely. When ready to use, pour into it lightly the rich cream whipped to a stiff dry froth. If whipped cream cannot conveniently be obtained, plain sweet or sour cream may be used in the dressing but it will not be so light and flaky cream salad dressing plain lemon juice half cup sugar one tablespoonful rich milk or cream half cup olive oil one tablespoonful salt one teaspoonful eggs well beaten two Put the lemon juice into a granite dish on the stove and add the olive oil, sugar, and salt. Put the milk or cream on the stove in another saucepan, and when hot, add the beaten eggs. Let cook smooth, but do not allow it to boil or it will curdle. Remove from the stove, and when partially cool, beat the two sauces together. This is a very nice dressing for vegetable salads. Cream Salad Dressing cream one cup milk cold butter size of walnut salt one level teaspoonful lemon juice four tablespoonfuls cornstarch one rounded teaspoonful eggs two sugar one level teaspoonful put the cream into a double boiler when scalding hot add the cornstarch dissolved in a little cold milk and cook about five minutes 
stirring constantly then add the butter to the yolks of the eggs add the salt and sugar beat till light and thick then add alternately the lemon juice and the hot cooked mixture fold in the stiffly beaten whites and set aside to become cold this dressing may be used the same as mayonnaise white cream salad dressing make same as cream salad dressing omitting the yolks of the eggs french salad dressing oil three tablespoonfuls salt lemon juice one tablespoonful onion juice quarter teaspoonful mix and pour over the salad lettuce dressing hard-boiled eggs three lemon juice half cup lettuce olive oil one tablespoonful salt mash the yolks smooth and fine add the olive oil and salt mix well and add gradually the lemon juice beat thoroughly then pour the dressing over the lettuce cut the whites of the eggs into rings and lay on top serve as soon as dressed golden salad dressing pineapple juice quarter cup lemon juice quarter cup beaten eggs two sugar one-third cup after beating the eggs well add the pineapple juice lemon juice sugar and small pinch of salt beat together and cook in a double boiler let boil about two minutes nut or olive oil salad dressing olive oil half cup water quarter cup lemon juice quarter cup salt one teaspoonful beaten eggs three beat all well together in the dish set dish in hot water over the fire and stir constantly till thickened as soon as it begins to thicken remove from the fire and place in a dish of cold water stirring until it cools set on ice till cold it is then ready for use oil salad dressing sour lemon juice two teaspoonfuls olive oil quarter cup salt half teaspoonful water two teaspoonfuls eggs two heat together in a double boiler stirring constantly when it begins to thicken place into cold water and stir until cold green mayonnaise make as ordinary mayonnaise use two light-colored yolks and six tablespoonfuls of oil chop enough parsley to make one tablespoonful put it into a bowl and with a knife rub it to a pulp then add gradually to the mayonnaise add a teaspoonful of the lemon juice use for fruit salad white grapes and pulp of shaddock mix and serve on lettuce leaves dressing la blanche butter one and a half dessert spoonfuls flour one heaped dessert spoonful salt egg one lemon juice quarter cup melt the butter in a frying pan but be careful not to brown it when hot stir in the flour well beaten yolk lemon juice and salt to taste stir this dressing through the vegetables and serve on a garnish of crisp lettuce End of chapter 3chapter four of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter four soups cream soups are seasonable at any time using any vegetable in its season canned goods may be used when the fresh article is not obtainable vegetables that are too tough and old to cook in any other way may be used in soups to advantage if it can be afforded a teaspoonful of whipped cream may be dropped into each plate and will be found very delicious by a puree is meant a thick soup it differs but little from cream soup being perhaps a trifle thicker if properly made cream soups and purees are dainty delicious and nourishing fruit soups are in favor during hot weather for dinners and luncheons they are very easily made and are wholesome and refreshing any desired fruit juice may be thickened with cornstarch sago or arrowroot 
and served with or without fruit fruit soup should always be served cold in glass sherbet cups with a layer of chipped ice on top kinds of soup observing these proportions and following the foregoing directions delicious cream soups are made of rice squash celery peas asparagus cucumber spinach peanuts potato corn lima beans cauliflower beets tomato salsify chestnut mushrooms onions baked beans lentils macaroni spaghetti watercress string beans sago tapioca barley carrots etc all vegetables should be cooked very tender in boiling salted water drained and rubbed through a sieve rice sago tapioca and barley should be boiled slowly till each grain is soft and distinct roasted peanuts are chopped fine chestnuts are boiled and mashed macaroni and spaghetti are cut into very small pieces after boiling till tender string beans are to be minced before adding to the soup cream soups foundation of rub one heaping tablespoonful of butter and two of sifted flour to a cream melt in a saucepan over the fire and add slowly four cups milk stirring constantly when it thickens add salt and whatever seasoning and ingredient is desired to make the soup croutons for soup take thin slices of bread cut them into little squares place them in a baking pan and brown to a golden color in a quick oven egg balls for soup egg yolks hard-boiled six salt one teaspoonful flour half a tablespoonful egg yolks raw two rub the hard-boiled yolks and flour smooth then add the raw yolks and the salt mix all well together make into balls and drop into the soup a few minutes before serving egg dumplings for soup milk one cup flour eggs two beat the eggs well add the milk and as much flour as will make a smooth rather thick batter free from lumps drop this batter a tablespoonful at a time into the boiling soup noodles for soup beat one egg till light add a pinch of salt and flour enough to make a stiff dough roll out very thin sprinkle with flour to keep from sticking then roll up into a scroll begin at the end and slice into strips as thin as straws after all are cut mix them lightly together and to prevent their sticking together keep them floured a little till you are ready to drop them into the soup which should be done a few minutes before serving if boiled too long they go to pieces vegetable bouillon vegetable soup stock two quarts cooked and strained tomatoes two cups bay leaves two salt one tablespoonful onions grated medium size two mix all the ingredients together and let simmer slowly two or three hours there should be about one quart of soup when done strain reheat and serve nut chowder soup nuttoline or protose quarter pound hard-boiled eggs three browned onions three sage one teaspoonful thyme one teaspoonful bay leaves two salt one tablespoonful chop all together till fine then add to strained boiling tomatoes four cups add boiling water one cup thicken with flour one tablespoonful reheat and serve nut french soup vegetable soup stock one and a half quarts tomatoes cooked strained two cups sage one quarter teaspoonful browned flour one tablespoonful rounded onions large one bay leaves two 
thyme one half teaspoonful salt to taste slice the onion and mix all the ingredients together excepting the salt boil slowly one hour strain reheat salt and serve this soup requires plenty of salt to bring out the flavor mock chicken soup butter one quarter cup onion medium size one celery stalks one milk one and a quarter quarts one egg flour two tablespoonfuls parsley chopped fine one teaspoonful nuttoline three tablespoonfuls flour put butter in saucepan with the onion parsley and celery cook it to a golden brown color add the flour and cook until brown being careful not to scorch now add the milk boiling hot and stir briskly to prevent lumping add the nuttoline beat the egg with enough flour to make a stiff batter but thin enough to pour pour this into the boiling stock stirring at the same time this will appear as small dumplings in the soup let simmer twenty or thirty minutes salt and serve mock chicken broth small white beans two cups small onion one salt hot water eight cups celery salt butter wash then stew the beans in hot water with the onion for three hours stewing down to six cups strain and add a pinch of celery salt and a small piece of butter salt to taste this broth may be served to the sick instead of beef tea plain vegetable soup one for soup stock water six cups strained tomatoes two cups shave in fine shreds add to soup stock and cook moderately for two hours carrot one potato one leek one turnip one onions two celery stock one add a little sage and thyme when done run through puree sieve or colander and add a little chopped parsley and salt to taste plain vegetable soup two butter two tablespoonfuls flour one tablespoonful chopped onion one chopped carrots half cup chopped potatoes half cup chopped turnips half cup chopped celery half cup place in heated saucepan stir often to prevent burning add a little more butter if necessary brown till vegetables are quite soft then add strained tomatoes two cups hot water to proper consistency season with parsley and salt to taste simmer till done white soubise soup bread four or five slices onions four salt one teaspoonful butter one teaspoonful rich milk two cups potatoes two flour one teaspoonful water four cups soak the bread in the milk boil onions and potatoes in water until well done and mix with the bread and milk add salt and flour rubbed in the butter strain all through a fine sieve bring again to the boiling point but do not allow it to boil serve if too thick add a little boiling water julienne soup fresh peas one-third cup chopped potatoes three-fourths cup tomato one-fourth cup soup stock one quart carrots cut in dice half cup chopped turnips one-third cup minced onion one chopped parsley cook the turnips and carrots together in just enough water to prevent scorching the potatoes and onions in the same manner the peas by themselves when all are done mix together and add the soup stock salt and parsley reheat and serve the water the vegetables are cooked in should be used in the soup tomato soup soup stock three cups nut butter one tablespoonful strained tomatoes two cups salt add tomatoes to soup stock also the nut butter mixed smooth and thin in a little of the tomato heat to boiling salt and serve bean and tomato soup 
Boiled beans, one cup. Butter, one tablespoonful. Cooked rice, quarter cup. Salt. Stewed tomatoes, one cup. Flour, one tablespoonful. Boiling water to required consistency. Rub beans and tomatoes through a sieve and add salt and butter rubbed in flour. Then add cooked rice and enough boiling water to make the proper consistency. Reheat and serve. Tomato vermicelli soup. Strain tomatoes, three cups. Vermicelli, half cup. Water, two cups. Cook the vermicelli in the tomato till done and add water if too thin bind with a little thickening of butter and flour a rounded tablespoonful of each will be enough for each quart of soup tomato and okra soup onion large one butter stewed tomatoes two cups soup stock or water four cups thinly sliced okra pods two cups flour one teaspoonful nut butter one teaspoonful chopped parsley salt brown onion in a saucepan with a little butter add flour nut butter tomatoes parsley and okra add the soup stock or water and cook slowly for three hours season with salt and serve white swiss soup rice half cup onion small one rich milk one and a half cups flour half teaspoonful water two cups potato one egg yolk one salt boil the rice in the water and add the onion and potato when the vegetables are well done add the rich milk and bring to a boil beat well the yolk of the egg with the flour and stir in the boiling soup let it boil season with salt rub through a sieve reheat and serve corn and tomato soup cornlet ground fine one and a half cups strained tomatoes two cups water one cup mix thoroughly season with salt heat to a boiling point and serve cereal consomme cooking oil quarter cup chopped onion one flour one tablespoonful crushed protose half pound caramel cereal one cup salt barley quarter cup carrot small one finely chopped boiling water six cups bay leaf place in the soup kettle the cooking oil and barley brown barley till quite brown add onion carrot flour and brown the vegetables till quite tender add the protose and boiling water let simmer very gently for six hours adding boiling water from time to time keep the original amount stir often to prevent burning half an hour before the soup is done add the caramel cereal bay leaf and salt press through a fine colander and simmer to six cups swiss lentil soup lentils one cup small onion one browned flour two rounded tablespoonfuls salt put lentils to cook in a large quantity of boiling water boil rapidly a short time then simmer without stirring when they begin to get tender and are yet quite moist slice an onion and press into the lentils until covered keep the vessel over a slow even fire until the lentils are well dried out the drying out may be finished in the oven if the lentils are covered so they will not harden on top when well dried add a little boiling water and rub through a fine colander removing the hulls into this pulp stir the browned flour beat till smooth then add gradually enough boiling water to make of consistency of soup salt boil and set where it will keep hot twenty minutes to an hour to blend ingredients spring vegetable soup green peas one cup onion one egg yolk one soup stock three cups salt shredded lettuce one head parsley one small bunch water one cup butter size of an egg put in the stew pan the lettuce onion parsley and butter with the water 
let simmer till tender season with salt when done strain off the vegetables and put two-thirds of the liquid in the stock beat up the yolk with the other third put it over the fire and at the moment of serving add this with the vegetables to the soup turnip and rice soup turnip medium-sized one milk three cups butter washed rice one-third cup cream one cup croutons or toast pare a medium-sized turnip slice and put with rice and butter into saucepan with sufficient water to cook let simmer till tender rub through a fine sieve and return to the saucepan mix in enough milk to make of the proper consistency stir over the fire and let simmer ten or fifteen minutes then stir in a lump of butter and cream serve with croutons german lentil soup lentils three-quarter cup carrot a few slices nut butter one tablespoonful celery one sprig or a little celery salt salt water four cups turnips a few slices applesauce half cup onion one boil lentils in the water with the onion carrot turnip and celery boil gently about one and one half hours put through a sieve and return to soup kettle add nut butter and apple sauce bring to a boil salt and serve if necessary add a little boiling water or rich milk to thin the soup lentil and tomato soup lentils one cup water four cups nut butter one tablespoonful salt onion one stewed tomatoes two cups browned flour one tablespoonful stew the lentils with the onion in the water one hour add stewed tomatoes nut butter and browned flour bring to a brisk boil season with salt press through a colander reheat and serve rice and nut soup vegetable stock five cups sage quarter teaspoonful rice three tablespoonfuls salt boil twenty minutes and serve barley and nut soup rice two tablespoonfuls vegetable stock four cups barley quarter cup salt cook the barley and rice until perfectly done and about one and one half cups of water add stock salt to taste reheat and serve nut and olive soup soup stock four cups ripe olives chopped twelve browned flour one tablespoonful tomato strained half cup lemon juice one teaspoonful nut butter two tablespoonfuls emulsify the nut butter in a little of the stock add the remaining stock and the rest of the ingredients except the browned flour which should be added after the soup has boiled salt and serve lentil and nut soup lentils three-four cup oil one tablespoonful large onion one vegetable stock four cups cook lentils till tender and put through a colander in the meantime brown the chopped onion in the oil add to the lentil pulp mix with stock salt reheat and serve nut noodle soup vegetable soup stock six cups nut butter two tablespoonfuls noodles mix the nut butter in a little of the stock until smooth and thin then add remainder of stock salt boil add noodles cook about twenty minutes serve nut and pea soup green peas four cups vegetable soup stock six cups salt two tablespoonfuls boil peas till tender rub through a colander and add to soup stock salt reheat and serve nut and bean soup beans one cup salt one tablespoonful vegetable soup stock four cups a little time cook beans in just enough water to prevent scorching when done rub through a sieve or a colander add the vegetable soup stock thyme and salt 
Reheat and serve. Nut and asparagus soup. Finely cut asparagus, four cups. Vegetable soup stock, four cups. Salt. Cook till asparagus is very tender. Put through a sieve. Add stock and salt. Reheat and serve. Brown bean soup. Water, two quarts. Tomatoes, one cup. Onion, quarter. Small bunch of herbs, anise, laurel, etc. Salt. Brown beans, one cup. Leek, one quarter. Juice of one lemon. Cook beans in water till soft, then add vegetables and herbs. After the soup is boiled, add the lemon juice. Rub through a sieve, salt, reheat, and serve. White bean soup. White beans, one cup. Onion, medium-sized, one. Salt, one teaspoonful. Water, two quarts. Nut butter, one tablespoonful. Stew the beans and onions in the water until tender. Add nut butter and salt. Press through a sieve. Bring to a boil and serve. The addition of some cream will improve this soup. Sago soup. Sago, half cup. Egg, one. Boiling milk, four cups. Boiled cream. Wash the sago. Add it to the boiling milk and simmer till the sago is dissolved and forms a sort of jelly. At the moment of serving, add the beaten yolk of an egg and a little cream previously boiled. Bean tapioca. White beans, three-fourth cup. Tapioca, half cup. Salt. Water, four cups. Hot water. Cream. Cook beans in water till well done. Press through a strainer. Add tapioca and cook till clear. Add hot water to make of proper consistency. Season with salt and cream. Heat well and serve. Green pea soup. Green peas in pod, four quarts. Spinach leaves, one handful. Sliced lettuce, one head. Dash of lemon juice. Salt, half teaspoonful. Sugar one teaspoonful, boiling water, six cups, cucumber, sliced, one half. Shell peas and throw into a dish of cold water. Break the shells and put them into a kettle with boiling water. Set over the fire and simmer half an hour. Remove pods and add lettuce, spinach, salt, and sugar. Let boil till the spinach and lettuce are pulpy. Take up and run through a puree sieve. Boil the peas and cucumber in a little water. Mash and rub through a sieve. Mix with the soup. Season with salt and a dash of lemon juice. Serve with croutons. Rice soup. Rice, quarter cup. Salt, one teaspoonful. Milk, three cups. Butter, one tablespoonful. Water, three cups. Egg yolk, one. Flour, two teaspoonfuls. Boil the rice in the water for 40 minutes, or until perfectly soft, adding salt. Add sufficient boiling water from time to time to keep the original amount. Press through a sieve and thicken with well-beaten yolk of egg, milk, flour, and butter. Add a little more salt if necessary. Serve with toasted crackers or zwayback, sprinkled with crumbs of cottage cheese. Lima bean soup. Lima bean soup may be prepared same as white bean soup, omitting the tapioca. Bread bisque. Dry sifted bread crumbs, one cup, added to cream soup, four cups. Tomato bisque, number one. Tomatoes, half quart can. Flour, one tablespoonful. Nut butter, one tablespoonful. Milk, four cups butter one tablespoonful salt bay leaf one onion small one place butter in pot add one bay leaf one small onion let braise till light brown add flour and stir until flour is well mixed add hot milk slowly stirring constantly to keep smooth add nut butter which should be emulsified first with the tomato then add slowly, stirring briskly. Salt. Heat thoroughly. Strain. Reheat. Serve. Tomato bisque number two. 
strained tomatoes four cups peanut butter about four tablespoonfuls salt put tomatoes in a double boiler set on the range and when scalding hot add the nut butter emulsified in enough water to pour readily mix together and salt to taste use plenty of salt to bring out the flavor rolled oats soup chopped onion one celery salt leftover porridge one cup milk two cups butter one tablespoonful bay leaf water two cups salt one teaspoonful into a saucepan put the chopped onion and butter cook carefully without browning the butter until the onion is perfectly soft then add celery salt bay leaf and porridge stir for a moment then add water and milk bring to a boil and strain add salt reheat and serve family favorite soup stock four cups sliced okra one pod salt stewed tomatoes half cup water one cup mix all together and boil one hour strain reheat and serve nut meat broth water four cups almond meal one cup gluten meal or brown flour two tablespoonfuls salt let all boil together thoroughly and serve pea soup with vegetable stock scotch peas one cup vegetable soup stock four cups mint quarter teaspoonful salt cook peas till soft and put through a fine colander to remove the hulls add soup stock and mint reheat salt and serve a cup of cream is a great improvement to this soup savory potato soup vegetable soup stock four cups potatoes medium size two or three mint one-third teaspoonful chopped onion one salt one teaspoonful marjoram quarter teaspoonful cook the potatoes and onion till soft put through a colander add the soup stock mint marjoram and salt which have been simmered together half an hour heat well and serve celery and tomato soup celery heart one soup stock two cups celery salt tomato two cups salt chop celery rather fine and cook in a little water till tender add the tomato salt and soup stock heat well and serve nut and cream of corn soup sweet corn rubbed fine one quart can vegetable soup stock four cups salt one heaping tablespoonful bring to a boil rub through a colander reheat and serve artichoke soup artichokes six onions small two sage quarter teaspoonful lemon juice one tablespoonful salt water two quarts protose one eighth pound bay leaf brown flour one tablespoonful select prime green globe artichokes before they have developed cut off the stems trim off the hard leaves round the bottom and cut off the upper quarter of the artichoke leaves put the water in soup kettle add the artichoke onions and protose let simmer gently for two hours then add sage bay leaf and lemon juice thicken with browned flour let all boil together a few minutes then press through a colander salt reheat and serve impromptu soup number one onion one slice into heated saucepan with savory or green herbs one pinch butter one tablespoonful let brown two or three minutes then add nut butter one tablespoonful brown a little longer then add stewed tomatoes one cup hot water three cups let all boil together and thicken with gluten salt strain and serve impromptu soup number two malted nuts half cup brown flour one tablespoonful flour one tablespoonful mix and dissolve in a little milk then add milk three cups and heat to boiling point stirring often to prevent scorching set back far enough to keep from boiling 
then whip into the broth eggs well beaten four salt and serve creole soup water two cups tomatoes one pint clove of garlic one small turnip one boiled rice heaped tablespoonful small carrot one boil all together season with a little salt rub the vegetables through a sieve and then to the consistency of cream with hot water or nut cream palestine soup jerusalem artichokes twelve celery one sprig boiled cream one pint croutons leek one sprig salt nutmeg wash and peel the artichokes put over them cold water sufficient to cover add leeks celery and salt simmer an hour and a half press through a sieve put back on the stove and beat into it a pint of boiled cream add a little nutmeg serve with croutons if too thick add a little hot milk or cream fruit soup pineapple thicken pineapple juice with arrowroot serve cold with a bit of pineapple glace in each cup chocolate soup chocolate sanitas quarter pound water two and a half cups sugar two tablespoonfuls flour one tablespoonful milk one quart ground cinnamon one teaspoonful whipped cream one cup soak the chocolate in two cups of the water when soft put to cook when it boils add the sugar and flour rubbed smooth in the rest of the water cook slowly for five minutes and add the hot milk strain stir in the cinnamon and whipped cream serve at once with crisps or wafers blanched almonds toasted are served with the soup fruit soup strawberry or other juice one cup pineapple juice one cup lemon juice one tablespoonful sago one tablespoonful sugar one tablespoonful chipped ice with the strawberry or other juice cook the sago add the pineapple juice and sugar cool and serve in sherbet cups with chipped ice fruit soup swedish boil prunes and raisins slowly till tender sweeten and save the juice boil sago till clear mix with the fruit and juice and serve very cold fruit soup orange thicken orange juice with arrowroot and serve very cold in cups with a bit of candied orange peel on top of each glass fruit soup lemon make a strong lemonade thicken with arrowroot serve very cold with a bit of candied lemon peel or candied ginger in each glass fruit soup marquise take two parts red raspberry juice and one of currant sweeten thicken with arrowroot and sago candied orange peel or blanched and shredded almonds are a dainty addition fruit soup cranberry thicken some sweetened cranberry juice with arrowroot and serve cold in cups as a first course at a christmas or new year's dinner fruit soup grape thicken bottled grape juice with arrowroot and serve cold with chipped ice this is refreshing for invalids fruit soup cherry thicken cherry juice with arrowroot and serve with other fruit soups garnish with black cherries in their season fruit soup strawberry thicken fresh strawberry juice with arrowroot and put on ice to chill put a layer of chipped ice on top of each cup before serving and lay a ripe strawberry stem and all on top of each glass raisin apple or prune soup either seedless raisins apples or prunes may be added to sago soup the soup should then bear the name of the fruit used end of chapter four chapter five of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt berard chapter five entrees mock whitefish 
Rice flour, one-third cup. Butter, one scant teaspoonful. Mace, quarter teaspoonful. Salt to taste. Milk, one cup. Onion, grated, one tablespoonful. Potatoes, mashed, three cups. Heat the milk to boiling. Stir in the rice, flour, butter, onion, mace, and salt. Cook all ten minutes, stirring frequently. Have the potatoes ready, freshly cooked and mashed. While hot, add the rice mixture and put into a pan to cool. When cool, cut in slices about five inches long. Dip in egg and crumbs. Put in oiled pan and bake until nicely browned. Serve with parsley sauce. Fillets of vegetarian salmon. Milk, one and a half cups. Farina, half cup. Tomatoes, cooked and strained, half cup. Egg, one. Salt to taste. Nuttoline, half cup. Eggplant, boiled and mashed, one and a half cups. Bread crumbs, fine and dry, one cup. Color, vegetable red enough to make salmon color. Cook and mash the eggplant. Stir the nuttoline to a cream in a little of the milk. Then add the rest of the milk, the eggplant, tomatoes, and salt. Set in double boiler. When scalding hot, add the farina and bread crumbs. Mix thoroughly and let cook 15 or 20 minutes. Remove from the range, stir in the raw egg and the color, mixing till the color is perfectly blended. Turn into a deep pan to cool. Should be about two inches deep. When cold, cut into slices, egg, crumb, and bake. Serve with parsley sauce. Chopped onion, small, one. Parsley, one tablespoonful. Boiling water, two cups. Butter, one tablespoonful. Bread crumbs, two cups. Eggs, two. Salt to taste. Put the onion, parsley, and butter into the boiling water and thicken with bread crumbs stiff enough to cut nicely when done. Into this mixture, put one hard-boiled egg chopped fine and break in one raw egg to make it hold together. Salt to taste. Put a layer of this filling into a baking pan, then a layer of protose cut in thin slices, then a layer of the filling, and another layer of the protose, and last another layer of the filling. Bake in a moderate oven one hour. Serve with olive sauce. Mock turkey with dressing. German lentils, one cup. Chopped walnut meats, half cup. Milk, one cup. Salt, celery salt. Granola, or bread crumbs. Minced onion, quarter cup. Chopped celery, one cup. Eggs, two. Sage, sliced bread. Thoroughly wash the lentils and soak overnight. Boil slowly until tender and run through colander. Add the walnut meats, one egg, and the minced onion browned with the chopped celery in a little oil. Add salt and sage to taste. Thicken with granola or bread crumbs. Dip thin slices of bread in a mixture of one egg and a cup of milk, or thin slices of nuttoline may be used instead. Make alternate layers of one and two. Dressing number one. Stale bread crumbs. Hot milk, two cups. Eggs, one or two. Butter, one tablespoonful. Mix bread crumbs with hot milk, eggs, and butter. Season with salt, sage, and onions. Serve with cranberry sauce. Dressing number two. Large onions, two. Fresh bread crumbs, one cup. Milk, three fourth cup. Sage, one tablespoonful. Beaten eggs, two. Chopped parsley, two tablespoonfuls. Butter, quarter cup. Salt to taste. Peel onions and parboil. Drain and chop fine. Soak bread crumbs in the milk. Then mix all ingredients together. Stir the mixture over the fire until it is reduced to a thick paste without allowing it to boil. 
serve a slice of the roast with a spoonful of dressing on one end and cranberry sauce on the other roast duck vegetarian style lentil pulp one and three quarter cups minced onion quarter cup chopped parsley one third cup stale bread crumbs ground fine one cup eggs one hard boiled three butter one teaspoonful chopped walnuts half cup take lentil pulp one hard boiled egg chopped fine one beaten egg minced onion and chopped parsley browned in a little oil one teaspoonful of butter and salt to taste mix well and put one half of this mixture in an oiled baking pan then a layer of the following mixture stale bread crumbs soaked in hot water chopped walnuts a little grated onion one egg and salt and sage to taste finish with a layer of the lentil mixture bake and serve with gravy nuttoline roast nuttoline one pound bread crumbs hot water one quart salt and sage to taste put the nuttoline through a vegetable press or work smooth with a knife or spoon add the hot water and beat to a cream add salt and sage and thicken with bread crumbs stiff enough to retain its shape when molded press into a deep buttered bread pan and bake till nicely browned turn out of the pan and slice serve with any good brown sauce or walnut gravy mock veal loaf nuttoline quarter pound minced protose half pound egg well beaten one milk quarter cup sage quarter teaspoonful ground mace quarter teaspoonful butter size of an egg one small onion braised in the butter cracker or zwieback crumbs enough to make a stiff mixture mix all together salt to taste and bake in a deep bread pan garnish with parsley or young celery hearts vegetarian roast nut food one-third pound onion half egg one hot water two cups butter two teaspoonfuls bread crumbs or granola to the water add the nut food minced and browned onion and butter thicken with toasted bread crumbs or granola until quite stiff add the beaten egg salt and a little sage if desired put in oiled pan and bake serve with gravy roast of protose protose one pound strained tomato half cup chopped onion one nut butter two tablespoonfuls browned flour two tablespoonfuls sage cut the protose lengthwise through the center then cut each half in six pieces place in a deep baking pan let the first piece lean slantingly against the end or side of the pan the second against the first and so on sprinkle this with finely chopped onion and a little powdered sage and pour over it a nut cream made of two heaping tablespoonfuls of nut butter emulsified in enough hot water to cover the protose add to this the browned flour rubbed smooth in a little tomato salt to taste a little celery salt may be used if desired cover and bake till the gravy is thick and brown hamburger loaf lentils raw one cup protose half pound cooking oil two tablespoonfuls salt chopped onion half cup eggs five bread crumbs cook the lentils until tender then simmer as dry as possible put through a colander brown the onions in oil and add to the lentils together with the protose and two of the raw eggs mix salt to taste and add enough bread crumbs so that it will mold nicely have the three remaining eggs boiled hard and the shells removed put one half the loaf mixture into a bread pan then put the three hard-boiled eggs in a row through the center and cover with the remaining mixture 
press down gently and bake serve with sauce imperial nut and granola roast minced nut food quarter pound onion one oil one tablespoonful egg one boiling water two cups granola brown the onion in the oil then add the minced nut foods and boiling water thicken with granola stir in the raw egg and a little sage or thyme if desired salt to taste put in oiled pan and bake serve with gravy cream nut loaf dried bread crumbs two cups ground sweet corn one cup ground brazil nuts one cup eggs two sage mashed peas one cup mashed potatoes one cup cream half cup salt mix all thoroughly together press in a deep bread pan and bake a nice brown serve with a sauce made of one part sweet cider and two parts grape juice thickened with a little cornstarch imperial nut roast pea pulp one and a half cups chopped walnuts one and a half cups bread crumbs one cup sage lentil pulp one and a half cups egg one salt milk to moisten mix the peas lentils and walnuts with salt to taste put a layer in a deep bread pan then put a layer made of the crumbs eggs milk sage and salt this should be just stiff enough to spread easily cover with the remaining pea and lentil mixture baste with cream put in the oven and brown walnut loaf chopped walnut meats half cup egg one boiling water two cups olive oil or butter half tablespoonful bread crumbs two cups salt to taste mix walnut meats and crumbs together pour over the boiling water mix well add the raw egg butter and salt stir thoroughly press into buttered bread pan and bake walnut roast granola two cups ground walnuts one cup milk or cream one quart eggs four soak the granola in the milk or cream for ten minutes and add the walnuts eggs salt and a dash of nutmeg mix the preparation well grease a baking pan turn in the mixture and bake thirty five to forty minutes cereal roast cream four cups nut meal one cup onion chopped fine one sage gluten half cup bread crumbs one and one fourth cups salt mix all together and bake in a moderately hot oven nut and tomato roast celery one root granola one and a half cups eggs five nuttoline half pound tomatoes two cups onions three protose half pound chop the celery and onions fine put into a saucepan with enough cooking oil to prevent burning and cook until a rich brown stirring occasionally add to this one quart of boiling water and the tomatoes boil for fifteen to twenty minutes then remove and strain as much as possible through a soup strainer. Take three and one-half cups of this gravy and mix with it the granola, eggs, and salt to taste. Have ready the protose and nuttoline cut into thin slices. Put in a layer of the granola mixture into a big baking pan, then a layer of protose, then granola, then nuttoline, and so on until all is used, finishing with the granola mixture. Bake 45 minutes or until a nice brown. Remove from the fire, let cool a little, turn out on a platter, and serve with the remaining gravy. Dried pea croquettes. Dried peas, one and a half cups. Egg, one. Salt. Olive oil, two teaspoonfuls. Bread crumbs. Cover the peas with water and soak overnight. Drain and cook in fresh boiling water until tender drain press through a colander add a little salt and olive oil mix thoroughly and form into small rolls about three inches long 
dip in beaten egg roll in bread crumbs and bake in a quick oven serve with tomato sauce chicken croquettes mashed potato half cup toasted bread crumbs half cup nut butter quarter cup hard-boiled egg chopped fine one browned onion quarter cup sage one teaspoonful hot water one half cup chopped walnuts quarter cup minced nuttolene two tablespoonfuls beaten egg one boiled rice one cup salt three teaspoonfuls mix all together and form into croquettes dip into beaten eggs and milk roll in browned bread crumbs which have been oiled or buttered and bake hashed protose croquettes protose one pound butter one tablespoonful salt potatoes one pound eggs four mace boil the potatoes mash add the minced protose the yolk of three eggs salt and mace mix thoroughly form into oblong croquettes egg crumb and bake egg mixture for croquettes fillets etc break an egg into a bowl or deep saucepan break up with a fork add a tablespoonful of hot water to soften the albumen of the egg and mix till free from lumps but do not beat in too much air dip the croquettes in the egg roll in crumbs and bake protose with browned potatoes peel and slice potatoes three-fourths of an inch thick cut protose in strips same thickness place in a pan two slices of potatoes and one of protose and repeat same until the pan is full pour over this vegetable stock sufficient to cover bake in the oven till the potatoes are done and nicely browned nut fricassee with browned sweet potatoes cut some nut food into half inch cubes and pour over it a thick brown or white gravy sufficient to cover well let it simmer about one hour peel and steam or boil potatoes until tender but not overdone put them in a baking dish with a little butter or olive oil salt and bake in a quick oven until nicely brown frijoles with protose mexicano mexican beans half cup vegetable stock one cup mace diced protose quarter pound strained tomatoes one cup salt cook the beans in just enough water to prevent scorching when done have ready a stock made of the vegetable stock tomatoes maize and salt pour over the beans together with the protose and let simmer for an hour or more fricassee of protose with potato serve a spoonful of nice white mashed potato on an empty platter press a slice of broiled protose up against the potato and serve with a spoonful of brown gravy garnish with parsley green corn and tomato corn pulp three cups strained tomatoes one cup butter one tablespoonful salt scrape the given amount of corn from the cob and the tomatoes and butter simmer until the corn is tender salt and serve as a vegetable cold boiled corn cut from the cob may be substituted for the fresh corn if desired mock chicken rissoles protost half pound nuttolene half pound milk half cup mace flour one tablespoonful butter quarter cup salt put the butter into a saucepan when hot stir in the flour and stir until brown add the hot milk salt and mace and let cook a few minutes chop the nut food fine and mix into the sauce have ready some tart shells made of rich pie paste fill with the mixture the sauce should be cool before adding the nut food new england boiled dinner potatoes four and a half cups turnips one cup onions two cups carrots three-fourths cups cabbage two and a half cups cut the potatoes carrots and turnips in three-quarter inch cubes 
slice the onions and cut the cabbage into pieces about one and one half inch square boil the potatoes and onions together the carrots turnips and cabbage may also be cooked together in salted water when all are done mix together and serve with slices of protose or other nut food that has been braised in a tomato or brown sauce nut and vegetable stew nuttoline one cup turnips three-fourth cup chopped celery half cup bay leaf one salt carrots one and a half cups potatoes one and a half cups onion small one butter one lump put all on except nuttoline and potatoes and boil one hour then add potatoes and nuttoline and cook slowly until potatoes are done salt to taste thicken with a little flour work smooth with a lump of butter a little protose might also be added stewed protose spanish butter one tablespoonful minced parsley one tablespoonful tomatoes four cups onions four flour two tablespoonfuls protose one pound put the butter into a saucepan and add the sliced onion minced parsley and cook ten minutes then stir in the flour mix well and add the tomatoes stir well to free from lumps cover and cook twenty to thirty minutes slice the protose into small pieces and simmer in sauce ten minutes salt and serve protose fricassee tomatoes one cup minced parsley one teaspoonful protose one pound vegetable stock two cups mixed herbs half teaspoonful onion one eggs yolks two mince the onion and braise in a little butter or olive oil five minutes add the minced parsley strained tomatoes mixed herbs and vegetable broth bring to a boil and add the protose cut into cubes or diamonds of one half inch cook for a few minutes and thicken with a few spoonfuls of flour rubbed smooth in a little water salt to taste and serve just before serving add the beaten yolks protose steak smothered in onions protose three-fourth pound cooking oil half cup salt onions large six vegetable stock two cups cut the protose into twelve slices lay half of them in an oiled baking pan have the onions sliced and lightly browned in the oil cook half of the onions over the protose then put on the rest of the protose then the remainder of the onions pouring the vegetable stock over all salt to taste bake until the stock is reduced to a rich brown gravy protose smothered with tomatoes protose three-fourth pound butter half cup salt tomatoes twelve sugar two tablespoonfuls celery salt cut protose into twelve slices and cut each tomato in half put one slice of tomato in a baking pan on this put a slice of the protose then a slice of tomato on top and so on making twelve orders in all chop the butter in little pieces and sprinkle over also the salt and celery salt cover and bake until the tomato is nearly done then remove the cover and brown very lightly serve two slices to each person garnish with parsley protose pot roast protose three-fourth pound strained tomatoes one cup vegetable soup stock two cups salt to taste mix the vegetable stock with the strained tomatoes salt to taste and pour over the protose which has been sliced and placed in a baking pan bake one hour braised protose and cabbage braise protose according to the recipe and serve with boiled cabbage protose steak with potatoes smothered in onions by putting a layer of sliced raw potatoes in the bottom of the pan and covering with the protose onions and stock we have protose steak and potatoes smothered with onions protose pilaf water three-fourth pint rice cooked one cup butter one teaspoonful protose half inch cubes
quarter pound minced onion one tablespoonful let simmer ten or fifteen minutes thicken with browned butter two heaping teaspoonfuls mixed with strained tomatoes to consistency to pour easily salt and celery salt to taste protose patties plain protose one pound salt cream three tablespoonfuls eggs two bread crumbs thoroughly crush the protose and mix with the salt and one egg form into patties roll in egg and cream then in bread crumbs bake in greased pan till lightly browned if desired the crumbs may be slightly moistened with cream braised protose protose twelve slices vegetable stock number two three cups sage minced onion medium size one butter butter a deep pan and sprinkle with the minced onion and sage on this lay the slices of protose cut a little less than half an inch thick cover the pan and put into the oven to brown turning the protose once and watching carefully that the onions do not burn remove from the oven and cover with the vegetable stock cover and return to the oven and bake until the stock is reduced to a thick brown gravy protose cutlets with mashed potato protose half pound milk one cup brown sauce egg one granose flakes cut protose into six slices as for protose steak dip in beaten egg and milk and roll in granose flakes do this the second time and bake in brown sauce about thirty minutes serve with mashed potato nut lisbon steak protose six large slices brown gravy three cups broil or fry the protose a nice brown but do not burn and drop into the gravy any good brown gravy will do let simmer an hour or two serve hot with a spoonful of the gravy more protose may be used if desired protose and tomato protose six large slices tomato cooked and strained two cups cornstarch one teaspoonful salt to taste cut the protose in rather thick slices and lay in a flat baking pan one about two inches deep will answer nicely boil the tomatoes and thicken with the cornstarch add the salt and pour over the protose bake slowly in a moderate oven do not bake too dry the protose should be nice and juicy with the tomatoes when done the cornstarch may be omitted if desired baked protose with macaroni macaroni not cooked one and a half cups oil one tablespoonful flour one third cup salt minced protose one cup minced onion medium size one milk two cups break the protose in one inch lengths drop in three quarts of boiling water previously salted boil from one half to three quarters hour turn into a colander and pour cold water over it drain and turn into baking pan sauce put the oil in a stew pan add the onion braised till nicely brown then add the flour and stir until brown add the milk then the protose season with salt pour this sauce over the macaroni and sprinkle with bread crumbs bake in a moderate oven till brown frizzled protose in eggs protose one pound eggs eight olive oil cut the protose into small thin narrow strips put into a frying pan with a little olive oil and when hot pour the well-beaten eggs over it stirring constantly until the eggs are set serve hot on toast escalloped protose protose one pound bread crumbs three-fourth cup potatoes medium size four brown sauce sufficient to cover slice one half the potatoes in a baking dish sprinkle one half the bread crumbs over them on the crumbs put half the protose cut into thin slices pour over some of the gravy to moisten add the remainder of the ingredients in the same manner making two layers there should be sufficient gravy to cover and cook the potatoes and protose eggplant 
baked with protose. Eggplant, medium size, two. Chopped onion, large, one. Salt. Protose, three-fourth pound. Vegetable stock. Peel and slice the eggplant in one-fourth inch slices and cut the protose into twelve slices. Put a layer of the eggplant in an oiled pan, then a layer of protose, and sprinkle part of the onion over all. Make another layer with the remainder and cover with vegetable stock. Salt to taste, cover, and bake. Tomato may be used in place of the stock if desired. Protose jambalaya. Butter, one tablespoonful. Minced onion, one. Minced garlic, small, one. Flour, one tablespoonful. Tomatoes, one and a half cups. Vegetable stock, one and a half quarts. Rice, one cup. Minced protose, three-fourth pound. Minced celery, quarter cup. Salt, mace, and bay leaves. Put the butter into a saucepan. Heat, add the onion and garlic, and brown. Then add the flour and brown. Add the tomato and cook a few minutes, stirring to prevent flour from lumping. When nice and brown, add vegetable stock and the seasoning. Boil until the ingredients are well blended. Add the rice and boil till the rice is tender, stirring often. To this add the minced protose that has been heated in a covered dish in the oven. Mix and serve. Ragout of protose. Protose cut in irregular pieces, one pound. Hot water, four cups. Browned flour, one tablespoonful. Celery salt. Strained tomatoes, one and a half cups. White flour, one tablespoonful. Salt. Put all together except the flour and let simmer 30 or 40 minutes, adding enough boiling water from time to time to keep the original quantity. Thicken with the flour and serve. Protose cutlets. Protose, minced, one pound. Season with salt, lemon juice, sage. Add a little chopped parsley. Make a heavy white sauce with two, flour, two tablespoonfuls, milk, three-fourth cup. If desired, flour may be rubbed with butter, one tablespoonful. Add salt to taste. Mix one thoroughly with two. When cool, make into patties cutlets or croquettes dip into beaten egg roll in bread crumbs that have been moistened with melted butter and brown in the oven protose chartreuse vegetable stock two cups egg one salt protose half pound rice cooked one quart bread crumbs sufficient to thicken to the stock add the protose bread crumbs the egg unbeaten and salt Mix thoroughly. Line a banking pan with part of the rice and fill in the center with the protose mixture. Cover with the rest of the rice and press down gently. Bake and serve with browned sauce. Protose steak. Split a pound of protose in two lengthwise and cut into as many slices as needed. Broil in a pan and serve with brown sauce. Protose steak a la tartare minced protose one pound butter one tablespoonful mayonnaise three tablespoonfuls onion one eggs six onions and olives mixed to garnish put the butter in a saucepan and set on the range when hot add the onion and cook until brown add the minced protose a pinch of salt and mix form into balls making a depression in each ball and drop an egg yolk into each depression Bake until the eggs are done. Chop the onions and olives, add the mayonnaise, and use as a garnish. Protose or Nuttoline Cutlets Protose or Nuttoline, six slices, each large enough for a cutlet. Eggs, three. Cream or rich milk, two cups. Breadcrumbs, buttered, one and a half cups. Salt. Beat the eggs, add the milk, and salt. Dip the slices of nut food in this and then in the buttered bread crumbs and lay in a greased baking pan place the remaining bread crumbs from the milk add salt and pour over the cutlets if not enough to cover a little milk may be added 
put into the oven and bake till the mixture sets or it may be placed on the range and when one side is browned turn and brown the other side golden nut chartreuse vegetable stock two cups cornmeal mush one quart bread crumbs egg one protose or other nut food half pound salt make the filling same as for protose chartreuse line the pan with the mush put in the filling and cover with mush bake and when cold cut into slices egg crumb and bake serve with gravy lentil hash lentils one cup potatoes medium size two rice two tablespoonfuls egg one onion large one tomato one cooking oil quarter cup garlic small piece boil the lentil onion tomato potatoes and rice together till soft chop very fine and add the cooking oil egg and a very small piece of garlic and salt to taste put into oiled pan and bake until brown lentil fritters lentils one cup rich milk quarter cup egg one butter one tablespoonful flour three-fourth cup cook lentils until tender drain press through a colander add the milk butter flour salt and beaten yolk mix thoroughly and add the stiffly beaten white drop in spoonfuls on oiled griddle and brown on both sides or bake in the oven garnish with parsley and serve with marmalade or applesauce walnut lentil patties cooked lentils two cups eggs two chopped walnuts three-fourth cup granola or bread crumbs rub the lentils through a colander and add the chopped walnut meats one egg and a pinch of salt thicken with bread crumbs or granola form into patties roll in egg and buttered crumbs and bake serve with gravy lentil patties on macaroni lentils one cup eggs two chopped parsley one teaspoonful minced onion two tablespoonfuls olive oil two tablespoonfuls bread crumbs cook the lentils until tender and put through a colander to this pulp add the rest of the ingredients using sufficient bread crumbs to make stiff enough to form into patties dip the patties in egg and crumbs brown in the oven serve on a platter with creamed macaroni walnut lentils lentils one and a half cups walnuts one cup butter cook the lentils in six cups of water until quite tender and the water almost dried away press the lentils through a soup strainer grind the walnut meats and add to the lentils add a little butter and salt to taste lentil roast lentils one and a half cups butter one tablespoonful granola one cup eggs two onion small one mixed herbs one teaspoonful ground walnuts one cup salt cook the lentils in sufficient water to prevent burning when tender add the sliced onion butter mixed herbs and salt to taste cook with the pot closely covered for twenty five to thirty minutes longer remove from fire drain press through a colander and add the granola ground walnuts and eggs mix well press into a baking pan and bake forty five minutes or until nicely browned lentil nut roast lentil pulp two cups egg one toasted bread crumbs or granola nut butter half cup dairy butter two teaspoonfuls emulsify the nut butter in enough water to mix easily mix all together and thicken with toasted bread crumbs or granola salt to taste put in oiled pan and bake serve with gravy a little thyme or sage may be used if desired rice mold rice one cup milk two third cup lemon or vanilla flavoring egg one sugar two tablespoonfuls stewed fruit wash clean and boil the rice in two quarts of water until done drain off the water well add while hot a custard made of the egg milk and sugar 
flavor with lemon or vanilla form into molds and serve with stewed prunes peaches or any other kind of fruit rice and banana compote rice three-fourth cup milk three cups vanilla bananas six sugar bring the milk to a boil thicken with cornstarch or flour and add sugar to taste simmer the bananas in this sauce for half an hour add vanilla rice for bananas cook the rice in two and one-fourth cups of water in a double boiler till done the rice should be soft and each grain standing out separate when done make a layer of the rice and serve the bananas on it rice and egg scramble rice two cups eggs four milk four cups thoroughly wash the rice and boil in salted water until tender and drain scramble the eggs in the milk add salt when nearly done mix with the rice and serve hot spanish rice rice one cup garlic medium size one half bay leaf one minced celery one stalk tomatoes two cups minced onion small one oil two tablespoonfuls mace half teaspoonful flour two tablespoonfuls salt boil the rice until about half done drain and finish cooking in the following sauce put the oil in a saucepan add all the other ingredients except the tomato and flour set over the fire and stir occasionally to prevent burning until brown then add the flour and stir till brown add the tomato let cook a few minutes strain and add to the rice corn fritters green corn pulp one pint milk four tablespoonfuls flour half cup eggs four mix the corn milk flour and yolks of the eggs together thoroughly then fold in the well-beaten whites of the eggs and fry by spoonfuls protose and rice chowder protose half pound rice cooked one cup potatoes half pound butter one tablespoonful vegetable stock one cup bread one-fourth loaf cream or milk one cup salt and mace to taste put the butter in a deep dish melt then add a layer of the protose sliced quite thin then sprinkle with mace salt and bits of butter then add a layer of the sliced potatoes sprinkle with part of the rice then a layer of bread then more salt bits of butter and minced onion add the remainder in the same order and pour over all one cup of hot vegetable stock set on range and let simmer one half hour then pour over all one cup of hot cream or milk and serve noodles butter one tablespoonful salt quarter teaspoonful eggs two flour to make a very stiff dough whip the egg until light add the salt and work in the flour making a smooth stiff dough roll out thin in a long narrow strip sprinkle with flour to prevent sticking and roll up into a long roll rolling crosswise then with a sharp knife cut into very thin slices and drop into boiling salted water cook about twenty minutes drain pour over the melted butter and serve hot vegetable oyster a la italienne take macaroni broken into one inch lengths and boiled until tender and vegetable oyster which has been parboiled twenty minutes and put in alternate layers in a baking pan pour over this a sauce made from both of the liquors macaroni and vegetable oyster thickened with the yolks of the eggs sprinkle with granola and bake until browned green corn chowder new england style corn pulp fresh cut from the cob two and a half cups diced protose one cup vegetable stock one cup parsley chopped one tablespoonful bread crumbs minced onion medium size one sliced potatoes two cups oil two tablespoonfuls salt brown the onion in the oil and add the protose and vegetable stock when thoroughly heated add corn pulp mix all together heat up well and salt put the sliced potatoes in cold water 
drain and put into a pan of flour shake the pan so as to cover the potatoes with flour put half of the potatoes in a layer in the bottom of a baking pan cover with half the corn and protose mixture sprinkle with bread crumbs and part of the parsley in the same manner add the remainder of the potatoes and mixture moisten with stock and bake until the potatoes are done squash fritters mashed summer squash two cups butter one heaping tablespoonful sugar one tablespoonful salt quarter teaspoonful rich milk half cup flour one cup eggs two mix thoroughly the squash butter milk flour sugar salt and beaten yolks then fold in the stiffly beaten whites brown on a griddle bean croquettes navy beans one cup olive oil one tablespoonful bread crumbs salt one level teaspoonful beaten egg one cover beans with water soak overnight drain and cook in fresh boiling water until tender or about an hour drain press through a colander add salt and olive oil mix thoroughly and roll into cylinder shaped croquettes dip into beaten egg roll in bread crumbs and bake in a moderate oven serve with tomato sauce scotch pea loaf scotch pea pulp one and a half cups egg one poultry dressing or sage nut food one pound butter two teaspoonfuls stir all together or thicken with toasted bread crumbs or granola bake serve with gravy bean and nut loaf white beans one cup onion quarter cup sage toasted bread crumbs or granola chopped walnuts one cup egg one salt thoroughly wash the beans and soak overnight boil thoroughly and when done rub through a colander add the chopped walnuts egg onion braised in oil sage and salt to taste thicken with granola or toasted bread crumbs put into an oiled pan and bake serve with gravy carrot souffle mashed carrots one and a half cups rich milk one cup toasted bread crumbs or granola one and a half cups braised onion one tablespoonful nutmeg one level teaspoonful yolks of eggs three beat the whites of the eggs very stiff and fold into the above mixture put into oiled pan and bake in a moderate oven okra gumbo vegetarian style ripe tomatoes two cups water one and a half quarts diced nuttoline quarter pound onion medium size one sliced okra two cups diced protose half pound butter one tablespoonful rice boiled one cup salt celery salt mace watercress parsley cook the tomatoes and okra in the water brown the onion and the butter add the protose and nuttoline with the seasoning brown all together a few minutes then add the tomato and okra let all simmer for two hours serve on platters on tablespoon of boiled rice garnish with the parsley or cress baked pot pie protose one pound carrots one and a half cups strained tomato one cup thyme potatoes two cups minced onion half cup chopped parsley cook the carrots about one hour then add potatoes onions protose and a little chopped parsley simmer in just enough water to keep from burning until potatoes are done season with thyme and salt to taste put in an oiled pan and cover with a rich pie paste bake thirty to forty minutes in a moderate oven baked eggplant a la creme eggplant six slices milk three cups butter toasted bread crumbs half cup salt two teaspoonfuls peel the eggplant and cut in slices about three-fourths of an inch thick place slices in a pan and cover with sifted toasted bread crumbs or sifted granola pour over this the milk add salt and small piece of butter and bake if it becomes too dry add a little more milk mock chicken pie 
boiled potatoes four cups nuttolene half pound eggs two pie crust protose half pound milk one cup chopped onion and parsley nut gravy put into an oiled baking pan a layer of the thinly sliced boiled potato and over this a layer of nuttolene cut into thin slices sprinkle on a little chopped onion and parsley then a layer of sliced protose pour over the nut gravy and let set five minutes cover this with the pie crust and bake till done green corn nut pie corn mixture corn ground two cans rich milk one cup flour three-fourth cup beaten eggs two salt to taste nut mixture minced onion one chopped celery quarter cup braise in a little butter or oil add water one cup strained tomatoes half cup minced nuttolene or protose three-fourth cup add to this sufficient bread crumbs to make a batter that will spread easily oil a baking pan and cover the bottom with one half of the corn mixture then put in the nut food mixture and the remainder of the corn to top bake till nicely browned vegetable oyster pie vegetable oysters one quart potatoes one cup cream sauce two and a half cups pie paste sufficient to cover chopped parsley one teaspoonful parsnips one cup salt boil the vegetables separately until tender then mix with the other ingredients and put in a shallow baking pan cover with the pie paste and bake a light brown serve hot vermicelli nut pie nuttolene half pound vermicelli two cups salt rich milk four cups eggs two cook the nuttolene ten minutes in two cups of rich milk then rub through a strainer flavor with celery salt cook the vermicelli fifteen minutes strain and pour over it while in the strainer two quarts of cold water when it is well drained line the bottom of a pie dish with one half of it pour over it the puree of nuttolene and cover with the other half of the vermicelli make a custard of two eggs two cups of milk and a teaspoonful of salt turn this custard over the pie and with a fork make an impression all over to permit the custard to run through sprinkle a few bread crumbs over it and bake in a quick oven thirty minutes serve with or without sauce nut and vegetable pie minced onion one cup minced parsley half cup brown and add mashed carrots two cups mashed potatoes two cups nut food one pound eggs two salt to taste and put in oiled pan pour over this a mixture made by beating one egg and one cup milk and bake in a moderate oven till it is nicely browned tomato pie tomatoes six chopped parsley salt cooking oil third cup pie paste peel and slice the tomatoes and place in a small baking pan on top of this put some chopped parsley a pinch of salt and cooking oil cover with thin pie paste and bake boiled macaroni plain put two cups of macaroni broken into inch lengths into a saucepan cover with plenty of boiling water salt it and boil till tender or about thirty minutes stir gently once or twice to prevent sticking to the bottom add enough cold water to stop boiling and let it come to a boil again drain in a colander boiled macaroni may be served with a gravy or fruit sauce macaroni alla italiane macaroni raw one cup cornmeal two tablespoonfuls grated onion two tablespoonfuls salt to taste milk or cream two cups tomatoes cooked and strained one cup break the macaroni into one inch lengths boil in salted water till done drain while the macaroni is cooking boil the milk and thicken with the cornmeal when thoroughly cooked add the tomatoes onions and salt pour this dressing over the macaroni and serve hot macaroni and cornlet macaroni raw one cup cream or rich milk three-fourth cup 
cornlet three-fourth cup salt to taste break the macaroni in one inch lengths and boil in salted water till tender drain add the cornlet cream and salt mix thoroughly spread in a baking pan and bake a light brown there should be enough cornlet and cream to cover the macaroni smoothly and it should not be too moist when done macaroni with tomato sauce macaroni raw one cup flour one tablespoonful cream half cup tomatoes stewed and strained two cups salt to taste break the macaroni into one inch lengths and boil in salted water till thoroughly done boil tomatoes and thicken with flour rubbed smooth in a little water add the cream which should be hot and salt to taste drain the macaroni pour the sauce over mix well and serve the cream may be omitted if preferred macaroni cutlets macaroni raw one cup flour two heaping tablespoonfuls minced protose one cup salt to taste milk one cup egg one bread crumbs boil the macaroni in salted water till done drain and chop fine boil the milk and thicken with the flour stir in the well-beaten egg beat thoroughly add the macaroni protose and salt and make it stiff with bread crumbs so it can be made into cutlets make into any shape desired put into it an oiled pan and bake till nicely browned serve with tomato or cream sauce creamed macaroni rich milk two cups flour two large tablespoonfuls salt macaroni one cup butter boil the macaroni and put it into a gravy made of the milk flour butter and salt mix well and serve macaroni and cream macaroni two and a half cups milk four cups egg yolk one cream one cup cook the macaroni in plenty of boiling water thirty minutes turn off the water and wash the macaroni by pouring two or three quarts of cold water over it return the macaroni to the saucepan and add the boiling milk remove to a cool part of the stove and cook for thirty minutes before serving add the beaten yolk and the boiling cream shake the pot to mix the egg with the macaroni stir as little as possible salt to taste egg macaroni macaroni one and a half cups eggs hard boiled three cream gravy two cups bread crumbs break macaroni into one inch lengths and boil in salted water till tender drain and wash with cold water put into a baking dish and sprinkle over it the hard boiled eggs chopped fine stir into cream gravy made from rich milk sprinkle top with bread crumbs bake until nicely brown baked macaroni with egg sauce macaroni two cups milk three cups granola eggs four salt one tablespoonful break the macaroni into inch lengths and boil in salted water thirty to thirty five minutes drain turn it into a deep pan pour over this a custard made with the milk beaten eggs and salt sprinkle with granola on top and bake in a moderate oven thirty minutes macaroni with apple butter a deep baking dish and put in a layer of mashed and sweetened applesauce grate a little nutmeg over and add a layer of cooked macaroni repeat till the dish is full finishing with the apple sauce bake till the apples are slightly browned served with sweetened cream seasoned with nutmeg may be served as a dessert macaroni and cheese vegetarian style number one macaroni two and a half cups egg sauce one cup sour cream half cup granola break the macaroni into inch lengths and boil in salted water until tender drain and mix in a little granola add the sour cream or thick sour milk and about one cup of egg sauce see egg sauce recipe page one fifty six season to taste and bake macaroni and cheese vegetarian style number two macaroni two and a half cups cottage cheese one and a quarter cups milk 
Butter, one tablespoonful. Bread crumbs. Break the macaroni and cook in salted water until about half done. Drain and pour over it enough milk to cover and simmer until done. Add the cottage cheese and butter and mix thoroughly. Pour into a baking pan, sprinkle with bread crumbs, and bake. Macaroni with granola. Macaroni, raw, two cups. Granola, half cup. Salt to taste. Cream sauce, two and a half cups. Butter, one tablespoonful. Cook the macaroni till tender. Drain. Put one half in a baking pan. Sprinkle on one half of the granola and cover with one half of the gravy. Repeat with the remainder, making two layers. Bake until nicely browned. Macaroni croquettes. Macaroni, raw, two cups. Butter, one tablespoonful. Egg yolks, two. Milk, one cup. Flour, two tablespoonfuls. Salt to taste. Boil the macaroni in salted water until tender. Drain and chop fine. Heat the milk. When boiling, add the butter and flour that have been rubbed together until smooth. Stir until thick. Remove from the range and stir in quickly the beaten yolks of the eggs. Mix this sauce with the macaroni. Season with salt, turn out into a flat pan and let cool. When cold, form into croquettes, egg, crumb, and bake. Macaroni Neapolitan Vegetable stock, three cups. Diced protose, half pound. Macaroni, raw, one cup. Salt to taste. Cook the macaroni, drain, and add the rest of the ingredients. Let simmer 30 minutes. Serve. Macaroni, Spanish style. Macaroni, two cups. Onion, one. Cream sauce, two cups. Salt to taste. Eggs, three. Parsley, chopped fine, one teaspoonful. Dash of nutmeg. Cook the macaroni in salted water. Drain and chop fine. Have the eggs boiled hard and chopped fine and the onions grated. Mix all together, sprinkle with toasted bread crumbs, and brown in the oven. Serve with tomato or chili sauce. Macaroni with tomato. Stewed tomatoes, two cups. Butter, two tablespoonfuls. Hard boiled eggs, grated or rubbed through a colander, one cup salt vegetable stock two cups macaroni two cups boil the macaroni till tender drain and add the stock and tomatoes not strained they should be put on a sieve and allowed to drain as the stock will afford sufficient liquid but chopped and there should not be enough of them to allow the tomato taste to predominate now add to this the hard-boiled eggs grated or rubbed through a colander Mix all together and add a little salt. Pour into a baking pan about four inches deep and bake until the mixture is thick. A few lumps of butter sprinkled over the top as it goes to the oven is an improvement. Scalloped macaroni with vegetable oysters. Vegetable oysters, peeled and sliced, two cups. Macaroni, one cup. Rich milk, two cups. Butter, one tablespoonful salt eggs two flour two tablespoonfuls breadcrumbs boil the macaroni and vegetable oysters separately and drain then place same in alternate layers in a pan pour over this a gravy made of the milk flour eggs butter and salt stir carefully so as to get the gravy mixed through thoroughly sprinkle a few breadcrumbs on top and bake in a quick oven till nicely browned Spaghetti and tomato sauce. Broken spaghetti, two cups. Flour, two tablespoonfuls. Bay leaves, two. Onion, minced, one. Tomatoes, four cups. Break the spaghetti into small pieces and boil until well done. Pour over this the tomato sauce made as follows. Brown the minced onion in a little oil. Stir in the flour and add tomatoes, bay leaves, and salt to taste. Let boil and strain. Protose hash. Protose, one and a half cups. Cold boiled or baked potatoes, two cups. Oil. Chopped onions, large, two. 
salt sage put all together in a pan pour over a little cooking oil and set on the stove when it begins to brown stir up with a thin knife occasionally until well browned vegetarian hamburger steak protose one pound sage half teaspoonful eggs two nuttoline half pound grated onion one tablespoonful granose biscuits powdered fine two mix thoroughly form into patties and fry serve with tomato sauce vegetarian hamburger steak with macaroni serve vegetarian hamburger steak with macaroni and a little brown sauce vegetarian sausage boiled rice three cups grated onion six teaspoonfuls protose one pound salt one and a half teaspoonfuls oil three tablespoonfuls sage six teaspoonfuls egg one form into patties and roll in gluten or browned flour and bake in a frying pan if browned in the oven put a small piece of butter on top of each baked stuffed tomatoes tomatoes medium-sized six chopped protose half pound sage half teaspoonful chopped parsley toasted bread crumbs eight to twelve tablespoonfuls chopped onion one tablespoonful salt one teaspoonful take out the inside of the tomatoes and mix with this the bread crumbs then add the other ingredients and fill with tomatoes piling mixture up on top place small piece of butter on each and bake in a hot oven until the tomatoes are cooked when nearly done sprinkle chopped parsley over the top End of chapter 5Chapter 6 of The Vegetarian Cookbook by E. G. Fulton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Vegetables. The term vegetable, as here used, is applied to such plants, grains, nuts, and fruits accepted as are cultivated and used for food. The use of a large variety of vegetables in our food assists in promoting good health. To get the best results, they should be judiciously combined with nuts, fruits, and grains. Green vegetables are rich in potash, salts, and other minerals necessary to the system, and in such a form as to be easily assimilated. Starchy vegetables, as potatoes, supply energy and heat, and give necessary bulk to the food. Peas, beans, and lentils contain a large amount of proteid used in building and repairing tissue and are therefore used in place of meat for weak stomachs they are more easily digested in the form of purees and soups with the outer indigestible covering removed all vegetables should be fresh for in spite of all that may be said to the contrary all vegetables whether roots leaves or any other kind begin to lose bulk and flavor as soon as removed from the ground the kind that suffer least in this respect are beets potatoes carrots etc those which are most easily affected are cabbage lettuce celery asparagus etc vegetables that have been touched with the frost should be kept in a perfectly dark place for some days the frost is then drawn out slowly and the vegetables are not so liable to rot general directions for vegetables Fresh green vegetables should be cooked as soon after being gathered as possible. Those containing sugar, as corn and peas, lose some of their sweetness by standing. Wash thoroughly in cold water, but unless wilted, do not soak. It is better not to prepare fresh green vegetables until they are needed, but if they must be prepared some time before cooking, cover with cold water. Most vegetables should be put into fresh, rapidly boiling water, and if cooked in uncovered vessels, they will retain a better color, as high heat destroys their color. In no instance permit them to steep in the warm water, as this toughens them, and in some instances 
destroys both color and flavor the salt hardens the water and also sets the color in the vegetable for peas and beans do not add salt to the water until they are nearly done as they do not boil tender so readily in hard water corn should not be boiled in salt water as the salt hardens the outer covering of skin and makes it tough cook the vegetables rapidly till perfectly tender but no longer if vegetables are cooked too long flavor color and appearance are all impaired to judge when done watch carefully and test by piercing with a fork the time required to cook a vegetable varies with its age and freshness therefore the timetables given for cooking serve only as approximate guides delicate vegetables as green peas shelled beans celery should be cooked in as little water as possible toward the last the water being allowed to boil away till there is just enough left to moisten in this manner all the desirable soluble matter that may have been drawn out in cooking is saved strongly flavored vegetables as cabbage onions etc should be cooked in a generous quantity of water and the water in which onions are cooked may be changed one or more times the general rule for seasoning vegetables is as follows to two cups small whole vegetables or two cups of vegetables mashed or sliced add a rounding teaspoonful of butter and half a level teaspoonful of salt to beans peas and squash add one half teaspoonful of sugar to improve them add milk or the vegetable liquid when additional moisture is required potatoes pre-eminent among vegetables stands the potato the solid matter of potatoes consists largely of starch with a small quantity of albumin and mineral salts potatoes also contain an acid juice the greater portion of which lies near the skin this bitter principle is set free by heat while potatoes are being boiled it passes into the water in baking it escapes with the steam new potatoes may be compared to unripe fruit as the starch grains are not fully matured potatoes are at their best in the fall and they keep well during the winter in the spring when germination commences the starch changes to dextrin or gum rendering the potato more waxy when cooked and the sugar then formed makes them sweeter when the potatoes are frozen the same change takes place in the spring when potatoes are shriveled and gummy soaking improves them as the water thus absorbed dissolves the gum and makes them less sticky at other times long soaking is undesirable soak about half an hour in the fall one to three hours in winter and spring never serve potatoes whether boiled or baked in a closely covered dish as they thus become sodden and clammy but cover with a folded napkin and allow the moisture to escape they require about forty five minutes to an hour to bake if of a good size and should be served promptly when done baked potatoes potatoes are either baked in their jackets or peeled in either case they should not be exposed to a fierce heat inasmuch as thereby a great deal of the vegetable is scorched and rendered uneatable they should be frequently turned while being baked and kept from touching one another in the oven or dish when they are pared they should be baked in a dish and oil of some kind added to prevent their outsides from becoming burned mashed potatoes pare and boil or steam six or eight large potatoes if boiled drain when tender and let set in the kettle for a few minutes keeping them covered shaking the kettle occasionally to prevent scorching mash with a wire potato masher or if convenient press through a colander add salt a lump of butter and sufficient hot milk to moisten thoroughly whip with the batter whip or wooden spoon until light and fluffy heap up on a plate press a lump of butter into the top and send to the table hot potato puffs potatoes prepared as for mashed potatoes two cups cream or milk three-fourth cup melted butter two tablespoonfuls eggs yolks and whites beaten separately 
two salt mix and beat up thoroughly folding in the beaten whites last make into balls put into greased pans brush with beaten egg and bake a light brown minced potatoes mince six large cold potatoes put them in a baking pan cover with milk add a little cream and bake fifteen minutes scalloped potatoes number one potatoes medium size six milk sufficient to cover mixed with tablespoon of flour crumbs butter salt cut potatoes into even slices put in a baking pan sprinkle with a little salt and add a few small pieces of butter pour over the milk and flour mixture and sprinkle the top with a layer of crumbs cover and bake till potatoes are tender remove the cover and brown lightly scalloped potatoes number two cold boiled potatoes sliced thin cream sauce place in alternate layers in a pan and sprinkle the top with ground bread crumbs bake until brown hashed browned potatoes use cold boiled potatoes or good leftover baked potatoes pare and cut into three-quarter inch dice or irregular pieces put in a shallow baking pan sprinkle with salt pour over sufficient cooking oil season well and prevent scorching put into the oven and when they begin to brown stir continually till all are nicely browned new potatoes and cream new potatoes cream salt butter parsley wash and rub new potatoes with a coarse cloth or scrubbing brush drop into boiling water and boil briskly till done but no more press the potato against the side of the kettle with a fork if done it will yield to gentle pressure in a saucepan have ready some butter and cream hot but not boiling a little green parsley and salt drain the potatoes add the mixture put over hot water a minute or two and serve potatoes a la creme cold boiled potatoes two cups parsley finely chopped flour milk butter one tablespoonful salt heat the milk and stir in the butter cut up in the flour stir until smooth and thick salt and add the potatoes sliced and a very little finely chopped parsley shake over the fire until the potatoes are heated through pour into a deep dish and serve potatoes a la delmonico cut the potatoes with a vegetable cutter into small balls about the size of marbles put them into stew pan with plenty of butter and a good sprinkling of salt keep the saucepan covered and shake occasionally until they are quite done which will be in about an hour potato croquettes delmonico's cold mashed potatoes two cups flour or cracker crumbs salt eggs two butter cooking oil season the potatoes with salt and butter beat the whites of the eggs and work all together thoroughly make into small balls slightly flattened dip them into beaten yolks of eggs roll in flour or cracker crumbs and fry in hot oil stewed salsify or vegetable oysters salsify cut in quarter inch slices one quart milk two cups butter one tablespoonful salt to taste wash and scrape the salsify slice and put into cold water to prevent discoloring cook in sufficient boiling water to cover when tender drain add the milk and butter let simmer a few minutes and serve escalloped vegetable oyster sliced vegetable oyster three cups rich cream sauce sifted bread crumbs salt wash scrape cut in thin slices and put into plenty of cold water till ready to use to prevent discoloration when ready to cook boil in enough water to prevent scorching salt when they begin to get tender boil a few minutes longer but do not let them get too salty drain or remove with a skimmer putting a layer in a baking pan then a little rich cream sauce then another layer of each sprinkle the top with sifted bread crumbs and bake a light brown mock oysters corn young and tender six ears 
flour three tablespoonfuls butter three tablespoonfuls eggs three oil salt three teaspoonfuls grate the corn with a coarse grater into a deep dish beat the whites and yolks separately and add the corn flour butter and salt drop spoonfuls of this batter into a frying pan with hot oil and fry a light brown on both sides the corn must be young celery cut up all the roots and remove all the decayed and outside leaves wash thoroughly being careful to remove all specks and blemishes if the stalks are large divide them lengthwise into two or three pieces and place root downward in a celery glass which should be nearly filled with cold water stewed celery celery hearts six white sauce two cups cut the celery into half inch lengths and cook in boiling salted water when tender drain and pour over this the sauce heat well and serve the liquid drained from the celery may be thickened seasoned with a little butter and used instead of the white sauce if preferred lentils oriental style lentils one cup olive oil two tablespoonfuls salt one level teaspoonful boiled rice one cup onion finely shredded one wash the lentils well soak overnight and drain cook in boiling water till tender drain again put the olive oil in a saucepan add the onion and cook till the onion is soft not brown add the lentils and boiled rice mix stir over the fire till hot add the salt and serve hot lentils with onions lentils one cup onions two butter wash the lentils put to cook in saucepan with plenty of cold water and boil till tender when soft turn them into a fine colander and drain thoroughly saving the water they were cooked in peel the onions cut into thin slices put in a flat stew pan with a lump of butter or a little olive oil and fry put the lentils in the onions and add salt to taste moisten with a little of the broth drained from the lentils and allow them to simmer at the side of the fire serve creamed chestnuts boil or steam the chestnuts till tender make a cream sauce of milk or cream season with butter and slightly thickened with flour pour this over the chestnuts serve as a vegetable asparagus number one asparagus like potatoes contains a bitter alkaloid which is drawn into the water in cooking and often imparts to it a very unpleasant flavor this may be remedied by blanching the asparagus in boiling water for four or five minutes then drain add more hot water and finish cooking asparagus number two scrape the stock ends of the asparagus or break off the tough lower stalks as far as they will snap wash well tie in bundles and put into enough rapidly boiling salted water to cover allow a teaspoonful of salt to each quart of water cook uncovered from twenty to thirty minutes or till perfectly tender drain remove the string spread with salt and butter and serve immediately on toast the asparagus may be neatly arranged on hot toast and covered with white cream sauce if preferred asparagus pompadour wash the asparagus carefully place in a saucepan of boiling salted water and boil till done take them out and cut into lengths of about two inches and place on a cloth near the fire to dry prepare a little sauce made of lemon juice butter yolk of an egg and salt place the asparagus on a dish over which pour the sauce and serve peas the flavor of peas and the time required for cooking depend largely upon their freshness very young peas will cook tender in twenty minutes older peas sometimes requiring an hour or more a teaspoonful of finely minced parsley cooked with peas imparts to them a very delicious flavor stewed asparagus break the tender parts of the asparagus into one inch lengths and put into enough boiling water to cover boil till tender add sufficient rich milk or cream to make a gravy thicken with flour season with salt 
let come to a boil and serve asparagus with eggs asparagus cream two tablespoonfuls salt eggs four butter one tablespoonful cut the tender tops from a bunch of asparagus and boil about twenty minutes then put into a baking tin with butter and salt beat the whites and yolks of the eggs separately add the cream and pour this over the asparagus bake until the eggs are set asparagus with green peas asparagus two cups peas two cups salt rich milk or cream flour break the tender parts of the asparagus into one inch lengths and put with the peas into boiling water enough to cover boil till tender add sufficient rich milk or cream to make gravy thicken with flour season with salt let come to a boil and serve baked beans wash one and three-fourths cups of navy beans and put them into an earthen jar covering immediately with one and three-fourths quarts of boiling water add salt cover and put into the oven when they boil well draw the jar to the edge of the oven where they will just simmer cook for twenty-four hours if they get too dry add a little boiling water the beans will be nicely colored and have a rich flavor baked beans small white beans two cups protose if desired molasses one teaspoonful salt clean the beans soak in cold water one hour season with salt and molasses put into a covered jar with plenty of water bake overnight in a slow oven when done the beans should be whole dry and mealy and of a rich brown color this can only be obtained by baking the beans several hours in a slow oven if desired a little chopped protose may be added serve the beans plain or with brown bread puree of beans follow the directions given for puree of peas beans stewed wash the required quantity of navy lima kidney or other beans and put to cook in plenty of boiling water boil till they are swollen then put them where they will stew till cooked season just before they finish cooking never parboil beans baked beans with tomato sauce prepare the beans as for plain baked beans put into the jars to bake cover with a mixture of strained stewed tomatoes and water in equal proportions a little butter or olive oil may be added succotash fresh shelled lima beans two cups sweet corn two ears cream half cup butter size of an egg salt put beans in pot with cold water rather more than will cover them scrape the kernels from twelve ears of young sweet corn put the cobs in with the peas boiling from thirty to forty five minutes take off the cobs and put in the scraped corn boil again for fifteen minutes then season with salt butter and cream serve hot onions contrary to the opinion of many the onion is not objectionable as an article of food judiciously used it fills as important a place in cooking as salt or any other seasoning baked onions onions large six salt crumbs milk butter put onions into a saucepan of water or water and milk mixed in equal proportions add salt and boil till tender when done so that they can be easily mashed work them up with a little butter into a paste cover with bread crumbs and bake in a moderate oven stuffed onions peel the desired number of onions being careful not to cut off the root end take out the inside of the onion and fill the hole with a mixture of bread crumbs beaten eggs and a little milk season with salt and sage bake in oven until brown scrambled tomatoes tomatoes six eggs three butter salt remove the skins from six tomatoes and cut them up in a saucepan add a little butter and salt when sufficiently boiled beat up eggs and just before you serve turn them 
into the saucepan with the tomatoes and stir one way for two minutes allowing them time to get thoroughly done spinach trim the spinach and wash in three or four waters to remove the grit cook in boiling water about twenty minutes removing the scum do not cover the vessel while cooking when tender turn into a colander drain and press well chop fine put into a saucepan with butter and salt set on the fire and cook till quite dry stirring it all the time turn into a vegetable dish shape and garnish with slices of hard-boiled eggs summer squash wash and cut in pieces cook in the steamer that it may be as dry as possible when done let it stand and drain a few minutes shaking it occasionally mash and season with salt butter and a little cream winter squash hubbard mashed cut the squash pare remove seeds wash and put into the steamer cook until soft remove and mash or press through a colander season with salt butter sugar and a little sweet cream beat well and serve baked cut into pieces of desired size remove seeds sprinkle with a little sugar and salt bake until done serve in the shell or it may be peeled before baking puree of peas peas fresh two cups or dry one cup butter one tablespoonful cream or milk one and a half cups flour one level tablespoonful salt one teaspoonful put the peas to cook in boiling water boil until tender then simmer slowly cooking as dry as possible without scorching when soft and dry rub through a colander to remove the hulls put the butter in a saucepan when melted stir in the flour being careful not to scorch pour in the milk gradually stirring all the time and when thoroughly cooked add the salt and the pulp of the peas turn all into a double boiler heat thoroughly and serve green corn stewed green corn three cups butter salt milk more or less one cup sugar husk and clean as for boiling corn with a sharp knife cut off the top of the grain being careful not to cut too close to the cob and with the back of the knife press out the remaining pulp when cut in this way the corn is much more juicy than when the grains are cut close to the cob place the milk in a granite saucepan and when boiling add the butter and corn cook from ten to fifteen minutes or until it loses its raw taste stir frequently and season to taste with salt and sugar green corn boiled strip off the husk remove the silk put into fresh boiling water and cook ten to twenty minutes cook only till done for if boiled too long the corn hardens and its flavor is impaired if the corn is not very sweet add one fourth cup of sugar to the water in which it is boiled green peas very young and tender shell the peas and cover with cold water skim off undeveloped peas which rise to the top of the water and drain barely cover with boiling water cook till tender then add salt when done very little water should remain season to taste with butter and add more salt if needed a little sugar is sometimes an improvement when the peas are older half a cup of milk or cream with sufficient flour to thicken is considered an improvement plain boiled string beans break off the ends of beans and string wash thoroughly if large cut them in two drop into boiling water and boil till tender salt and season with olive oil or butter if preferred drain off the juice salt to taste and add some hot rich milk cauliflower with cream sauce divide the cauliflower into portions of convenient size before cooking boil slowly or steam till tender drain and when dished up pour one or two tablespoonfuls of strained white sauce over each portion baked cauliflower cauliflower milk one cup flour one rounded teaspoonful butter one rounded teaspoonful salt 
soak a medium head of cauliflower in cold water with head down for thirty minutes steam or boil gently till tender separate into small sprays and pour over them a sauce made of the milk thickened with flour and butter beaten together add a little salt cover lightly with bread crumbs which have been moistened with melted butter and bake until a nice brown serve at once cauliflower with tomato sauce prepare as for stewed cauliflower and when done serve with tomato sauce strain a pint of stewed tomatoes let come to a boil and thicken with a tablespoonful of flour rubbed smooth in a little water add a little olive oil or hot cream salt to taste pour this over the cauliflower and serve stewed cauliflower prepare as for plain boiled cauliflower cook or steam till tender drain and put in a stew pan pour over some rich milk or cream stew together for a few minutes and serve boiled cauliflower plain pick off the outside leaves cut the stalk one inch from the head split wash thoroughly in cold water put in salted water for one or two hours before cooking cook in salted boiling water milk added to the water will keep it white boil till tender remove from the fire let stand in same water till ready to serve drain serve with cream butter or egg sauce poured over browned cauliflower prepare as for plain boiled cauliflower boil until tender place in a baking dish and sprinkle with fine bread crumbs pour over some thin cream sauce and brown in the oven serve with egg or butter sauce cabbage and cream cabbage one head grated nutmeg cream one and a half cups butter two tablespoonfuls flour one teaspoonful salt take a well-blanched cabbage drain cool and chop fine place it in a stew pan with butter a little salt and grated nutmeg add the flour stirring well and then pour in the cream stir till the cabbage and cream are thoroughly mixed cook about thirty or forty minutes and serve hot baked cabbage number one wash and chop rather fine the required quantity of cabbage put into a stew pan with boiling water add a little salt and blanch twenty minutes drain put in a baking pan and cover with cream or milk to which has been added the beaten yolk of one egg to each cup of cream bake until the custard is nicely set baked cabbage number two cabbage cold boiled brown crumbs butter salt egg well beaten one brown sauce nutmeg rub sufficient cold boiled cabbage through a sieve or colander mix with it a piece of butter salt nutmeg and the well-beaten egg stir thoroughly butter a pudding dish of suitable size line with browned crumbs press in the cabbage and bake in a moderate oven turn out on a hot dish pour brown sauce around the base and serve cabbage stewed with tomato slice and wash a good sound cabbage and put into a stew pan with enough chopped tomato to give it a decidedly tart taste add enough salt to season add sufficient water to cook and stew slowly till tender strained tomatoes may be used if desired scalloped cabbage wash and chop the cabbage in rather fine pieces put a layer of the cabbage into a baking pan and sprinkle with a little salt cover this with finely broken fresh bread crumbs repeat and pour over sufficient milk or cream to thoroughly moisten and cover the crumbs cover and bake in a moderate oven till the cabbage is thoroughly cooked more milk may be added if necessary holland cream cabbage cabbage eggs two water two cups lemon juice two tablespoonfuls salt butter cut the cabbage fine sprinkle with salt and let stand a few minutes before using beat the eggs well add lemon juice water and melted butter mix this with the cabbage and cook till tender in a vessel that does not easily burn 
Clean a nice young head of cabbage, quarter, cut out the heart, and shred fine. Put in cold, salted water for half an hour. Drain, boil till tender, drain partly, leaving enough juice to make the cabbage moist. Add lemon juice and a little butter or olive oil. Season with salt. Serve hot. Ladies' Cabbage Firm white cabbage, 1. Butter, 1 tablespoonful. Salt. Eggs, 2. Cream, rich, 1 tablespoonful. Boil a firm white cabbage 15 minutes, changing the water. Add more from the boiling tea kettle. When tender, drain and set aside till perfectly cold. Chop fine and add the beaten eggs, butter, salt, and cream. Stir all well together and bake in a buttered dish till brown. Brussels sprouts plain. Select a nice fresh sprouts, cut off the stem end and outside leaves, and wash in cold water. Cook in salted water till tender. Pour off the water. Serve with butter or cream sauce. Brussels Sprouts Sauté Prepare as for plain boiled. When done, drain and press dry. Put in a stew pan, season with salt and moisten with oil and rich milk. Toss frequently and cook till well heated through. Serve hot with mashed potato. Brussels Sprouts Baked with Crumbs Prepare as for plain boiled. When done, drain and press dry. Arrange in a baking dish and sprinkle with bread crumbs. Pour over a thin cream or egg sauce. Bake in the oven till nicely browned. Beets. Select young red beets. Cut off the tops half an inch from the root. If cut too close, the roots will bleed and the color will be impaired. Wash and clean carefully with the brush to remove all particles of dirt. They may be boiled or steamed. If boiled, use as little water as possible. Young beets will cook in an hour. Old beets require three or four hours, according to age and size. When done, put in cold water, rub off the skins, and they are ready for use. Beet Greens Wash young, tender beet tops, cleaning thoroughly. Drain and boil in salted water till tender. Drain, chop fine, season with butter or oil, and serve with lemon juice or cream. Beet stalks with butter sauce. Take some beet stalks, cut off the leaves, wash thoroughly, tie in bunches, and let steep in cold water two or three hours to make them fresh and crisp. Boil in salted water until tender. Cut the band. Serve as asparagus on a platter with butter sauce. Beets and Potatoes Boil young beets and new potatoes separately until tender. Peel and slice in alternate layers in a baking dish. Season with salt and moisten with rich milk. Bake until nicely browned. Select young, smooth red beets of uniform size. Wash and clean thoroughly. Bake in a slow oven from two to six hours. When done, remove the skins and dress with lemon juice or cream sauce. Boiled Beets Cut off the tops half an inch from the roots. Wash and clean carefully to remove all dirt. Boil in as little water as possible. When done, pour a little cold water over them. Rub off the skins and slice into a granite or earthen dish. Pour over them equal parts of lemon juice and water. Let stand one or two hours before serving. Young Beets Cream or milk, one cup. Flour, one tablespoonful. Butter, one tablespoonful. Beets. Cook the beets till tender in salted water, then cut into dice. Serve with cream sauce made by thickening the milk or cream with the flour rubbed in the butter. Heat well and serve at once. Beet and potato hash. Cold boiled beets, two cups. Cold boiled potatoes, two cups. Salt, butter, cream. Chop beets and potatoes fine and season with salt and butter. Pour over a little cream. Put on the stove in a covered saucepan and stir occasionally. When thoroughly heated, through. Serve. Baked parsnips. Scrape and cut in half lengthwise. Boil till tender. Put in a shallow baking pan. Put a few pieces of chopped butter 
or a little cooking oil on top. Sprinkle lightly with sugar. Pour over sufficient cream to about half cover. Salt to taste and bake a rich brown. Parsnips in egg sauce. Clean and cut into small dice and boil in a little salted water until tender. Drain and pour over sufficient egg sauce to cover. Stewed parsnips. After washing the parsnips, slice them about half an inch thick. Put them in a saucepan containing enough boiling water to barely cook them. Add a tablespoonful of butter. Season with salt, then cover closely and stew them until the water has cooked away, stirring often to prevent burning until they are soft. When they are done, they will be of a creamy, light straw color and deliciously sweet, retaining all the nutrition of the vegetable. Young Turnips Cut into half-inch dice and boil till tender. Drain and add a small lump of butter and a little salt. Heat well and add a dash of lemon juice at the last. Mashed Turnips Turnips may be cooked and mashed the same as potatoes, keeping them as dry as possible. The addition of a little sugar is considered an improvement by some. Holland Boiled Turnip Turnips, cut in three-fourth inch dice, one quart, egg, one, butter, half cup, lemon, large, one. Boil the turnips till tender in just enough salted water to prevent burning. Drain and set in a covered dish on the side of the range, where they will keep hot but not burn. Melt the butter, add the beaten yolk with the eggs, juice of the lemon, and a little salt. Serve a spoonful of this sauce over each order of turnip. French Carrots Scrape enough small round carrots to make three cups. Boil in salted water till tender. Drain and cover with a rich parsley sauce. Carrots a la creme. Clean carrots, cut in slices about half an inch thick, and parboil in salted water. Drain, pour over some hot, rich milk, and let simmer. Add a little butter, season with salt. Carrots with egg sauce. Clean carrots, cut in slices about half an inch thick, and boil until tender. Drain, pour egg sauce over, and serve. Puree of carrots. Clean young carrots, cut into slices, and boil in salted water until tender. Drain, mash through a colander, and season with a little salt and cream. Serve as mashed potatoes, or with broiled or braised protose as an entree. To dress cucumbers. Pair and lay in cold water, ice water if possible, for an hour. Slice very thin. Sprinkle a very little fine salt over each piece. Let stand for an hour. Shake the dish briskly. Drain closely. Sprinkle with lemon juice and serve. End of chapter 6 Chapter 7 of The Vegetarian Cookbook by E. G. Fulton this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Sauces for vegetables, entrees, puddings, etc. Vegetable soup stock, number one. Cooking oil, half cup. Butter, quarter cup. Put into a saucepan and add. Carrot, medium, one. Turnip, one. Celery stalks with root, two. Parsley sprigs, two or three. Onions, large, two. Bay leaves, two. All to be chopped fine. Place on range and cook slowly, stirring occasionally to prevent burning until vegetables are nicely browned. Then add flour, half cup. Stir and mix thoroughly until a rich brown, being careful not to burn. Now add strained tomato, one cup. Boiling water to required consistency. Strain through a fine sieve, and the stock is ready for use. Vegetable stock number two. 
Boil some turnips, carrots, celery, and onion in enough water to make half the amount of stock required. When the vegetables are done, drain and add an equal amount of rich bean broth with a little brown flour, nut butter, celery salt, and just enough strained tomato to remove the sweet vegetable taste. This should be of the consistency of broth when done. Use with roast braised protose, etc. Protose may be cooked with the vegetables if it can be afforded. The vegetables should be put to cook in cold water that the substance and flavor may be well drawn out. Olive Sauce Take one-fourth cup of ripe olives and, after extracting the stones, chop fine. Put on the stove and stew for two or three hours in water enough to cover well. Brown together a little olive oil and flour the same as for gravy. Strain through a colander and add the stewed olives. Season with salt. Brown Regency Sauce For Vegetables and Roasts Nut butter, one cup, sage, one tablespoonful, brown flour, three heaping tablespoonfuls, salt, minced onion, two tablespoonfuls, water, one and a half quarts, Mix all together, salt lightly, put in an enameled baking pan, cover, and bake till of the desired consistency. Hollandaise sauce. Butter, one tablespoonful. Olive oil, one tablespoonful. Flour, one tablespoonful. Salt. Lemon juice, two tablespoonfuls. Eggs, two. Nutmeg. Rub the butter, flour, nutmeg, and salt together until smooth and add slowly one and one-half cups hot water, stirring constantly. Boil, remove from the fire, and add the lemon juice, olive oil, and the yolks of the eggs, one at a time. Beat slowly and thoroughly together, strain, and serve. Sauce Imperial Stewed tomatoes, one quart. Bay leaves, two. Onion, medium, one. Lemon, one quarter. Chopped parsley, one tablespoonful, thyme, one teaspoonful, cooking oil, two tablespoonfuls, flour, two tablespoonfuls. Put the oil, parsley, bay leaves, thyme, and onions into a stew pan. Set on the range and cook until the onion is a golden brown, being careful not to burn. Then add the flour, let cook a few minutes, add the lemon and tomato, and let stew half an hour. Strain, salt, and serve. The chopped parsley may be added just before serving, if desired. Mint sauce. Mint, quarter cup. Sugar, one-third cup. Lemon juice, half cup. Mix all together, set on the side of the range where the sugar will melt, and the sauce be hot, but it must not get too hot. Serve with protose or meat substitutes. White cream sauce for vegetables. Butter two rounding tablespoonfuls, flour, two rounding tablespoonfuls, milk, two cups, salt, half teaspoonful. Melt the butter in a saucepan. Add the flour and cook until well blended, but not browned. Add the milk gradually and stir until boiling well. Then add the salt. Half milk and half broth of the vegetables may be used if desired, unless the broth has a bitter or otherwise objectionable taste, as is sometimes the case with asparagus. German sauce. Egg yolks, 12. Fruit juice, bright colored, 1 cup. Sugar, half cup. Juice of half lemon. Beat the yolks of the eggs about 2 minutes. Put the sugar into a saucepan with the fruit juice preferably cherry or strawberry. Stir it over the fire till hot, then remove it to the side as it must not be permitted to boil. Stir in the beaten yolks and add the lemon juice. Whisk the sauce at the side of the fire until well frothed and thickened. Tomato sauce. Tomatoes, stewed, one quart. Butter, one tablespoonful. Salt, minced onion, one tablespoonful. Flour, one tablespoonful. Put the tomatoes into a saucepan over the fire. Add the onion and salt. Boil about 20 minutes. Remove from range and strain through a sieve. In another pan, melt the butter, and as it melts, sprinkle in the flour. 
stir till it browns and froths a little mix the tomato pulp with it and it is ready for use ideal chili sauce stewed tomatoes one quart celery salt one teaspoonful sugar one tablespoonful sliced onion large one salt one and a half teaspoonfuls mix all together and let simmer two or three hours strain through a sieve serve with croquettes broiled protose or nuttolene nut gravy number one nut butter four tablespoonfuls strained tomatoes one cup hot water two cups thoroughly mix the butter with the water and tomato let it boil and salt to taste if too thin thicken with a little flour rub smooth in a little water nut gravy number two water one quart strained tomatoes one and a half cups salt to taste nut butter one heaped tablespoonful flour emulsify the butter in the tomato add to the water and put in a saucepan over the fire being careful not to scorch when it boils thicken with a little flour rubbed smooth in water using plenty of salt to season as it brings out the nice flavor of the sauce cream tomato sauce make a tomato sauce and add one fourth part rich cream beating well tomato cream sauce make a rich cream sauce and add one fourth part of strained tomatoes or an equal amount of tomato sauce beat up well brown sauce for vegetables and roasts water two cups minced onion small one browned flour two rounded tablespoonfuls strained tomato enough to mix the flour smooth salt minced protose quarter cup butter one rounded tablespoonful white flour one tablespoonful celery salt put the water butter and onion in a saucepan and set on the stove when it begins to boil add the protose and let simmer ten or fifteen minutes then place where it will boil and thicken with the browned and white flour rubbed smooth in the tomato the thickening should be thin enough to pour readily let cook a few minutes and add salt and celery salt and serve with vegetables or roasts walnut gravy ground walnuts one cup milk one cup flour water two cups salt to taste Put the water and milk in a saucepan, and when boiling, add the walnuts. Thicken with a little flour thickening, and salt to taste. Parsley sauce. Add two tablespoonfuls of finely chopped parsley to two cups of cream sauce. Brown sauce. Vegetable stock, two cups. Brown flour, two tablespoonfuls. Strained tomatoes, quarter cup. Heat the stock to boiling. Add the hot tomato and thicken with browned flour. Cream sauce. Cream, half cup. Flour, one heaped tablespoonful. Milk, two and a half cups. Mix the flour to a smooth cream and a little milk. Boil the cream and remainder of the milk and thicken with the flour. Salt to taste. If a richer sauce is desired, the beaten yolks of one or two eggs may be added. Egg sauce cream sauce one pint egg one beat the egg and add to the cream sauce mixing thoroughly bread sauce stale bread crumbs one cup chopped onion one butter one large teaspoonful vegetable stock one cup mace quarter teaspoonful rub the bread crumbs through a sieve and add the butter and add the onion and mace boil for a few minutes in the vegetable stock add the butter and serve hard sauce butter three-fourth pound powdered sugar one pound nutmeg to suit beat the butter and sugar together until white and creamy then add the nutmeg golden sauce nutmeg half sugar one cup butter one rounding tablespoonful egg yolks two cornstarch one tablespoonful water two cups break the nutmeg into pieces and put in a saucepan with the water boil and add the cornstarch mixed sifted with the sugar 
stir over the fire until the cornstarch is cooked then add the butter beat the yolks with one tablespoonful of the sauce then stir quickly into the remainder which should be immediately removed as the yolks will curdle if boiled strain and serve vanilla sauce cream two cups eggs three flour two tablespoonfuls sugar and vanilla to taste thicken the cream with the flour and stir in the beaten yolks cook a few minutes stirring all the time add sugar to taste when cool add the beaten whites and flavor with vanilla orange sauce oranges two eggs two butter to suit sugar one cup lemon juice quarter cup put the juice of the oranges and the grated rind of one with the sugar into a saucepan set on the range and stir till the sugar is melted or dissolved then strain through a fine sieve to remove the rind add the beaten eggs lemon juice and butter before serving set in double boiler and stir for a few minutes to melt the butter and thoroughly mix the eggs serve hot or cold lemon sauce for pudding number one sugar two cups eggs two lemons two boiling water one and a half cups add the grated rind and juice of the lemons to the sugar beat the eggs until light and add to the sugar and stir well just before serving add the boiling water and set on the stove but do not boil for a richer sauce add one-third of a cup of butter lemon sauce number two water two cups cornstarch three tablespoonfuls butter one tablespoonful sugar one cup lemon grated rind and juice one boil the sugar in the water for five minutes then stir in the cornstarch previously mixed with a little cold water stir over the fire ten minutes then add the grated rind and juice of the lemon and the butter when the butter is melted the sauce is ready for use sauce for plum pudding butter one large tablespoonful hot water one and a half cups lemon juice one tablespoonful flour two tablespoonfuls brown sugar one cup grated nutmeg put the butter into a saucepan when it is melted stir in the flour and mix well then pour in gradually the hot water and stir over the fire till well cooked then add the sugar lemon juice and a small quantity of grated nutmeg End of chapter 7chapter eight of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this LibriVox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard eggs omelets omelets may be made with asparagus cauliflower lima beans onions peas lentils granose gluten rice nuts etc boil the vegetables till tender chop fine then beat with the eggs and proceed as with plain omelets omelet souffle number one take two eggs separate whites from yolks beat whites very stiff salt and add yolks beating just enough to mix yolks with whites turn into a hot oiled omelet pan put in a medium hot oven and bake till done or to a rich brown serve in great haste on being removed from the oven to prevent falling omelet souffle number two eggs four powdered sugar two tablespoonfuls flavoring beat the yolks of the eggs as light as possible and add the sugar a few drops of flavoring and beat to a cream beat the whites until you can turn the plate bottom side up without their falling pour the beaten whites and yolks together and mix thoroughly put into an oiled baking dish and dust with powdered sugar bake in a moderate oven till a golden brown serve at once a very delicate souffle is made of whites of egg beaten stiff adding a tablespoon of sugar to two whites and chopped apricots or peaches any kind of marmalade may be used in place of fruit plain omelette french break eggs into a dish whip lightly with egg whip or fork 
turn into hot oiled skillet and place on range as soon as they begin to set lift edges of omelet so that the uncoagulated part can run under next to the bottom of the skillet when light brown turn and cook till light brown on the other side fold with knife about one-third over then toss out on hot platter so that the one-third fold will be underneath garnish with parsley and watercress serve at once protose omelet protose half a thin slice eggs two minced parsley cooking oil mince the protose fine break two eggs separating the whites beat the yolks a little and stir the minced protose into them beat the whites into a froth not stiff and stir into the protose add a little minced parsley put a little oil into the omelet pan and when hot pour in the mixture cook a few minutes insert a knife between the omelet and pan and with a sudden turn of the hand fold the omelet in two finish cooking in hot oven two or three seconds serve hot gluten omelet same as plain omelet adding one tablespoonful of gluten to eggs and cream before whipping serve at once on a hot platter rice omelet same as plain omelet only adding one tablespoonful of cooked rice to eggs and milk before beating serve on a hot platter at once apple omelet same as plain omelet serve with a tablespoonful of well-seasoned applesauce mix with equal amount of beaten white of egg on side of platter granose omelet same as plain omelet adding two tablespoonfuls of cream instead of milk and one or two tablespoonfuls of granose before whipping omelet with tomato prepare a plain omelet and when ready to fold put a layer of baked ripe tomatoes on one half and fold the other half over it serve with or without a tomato gravy as preferred onion omelet make as for plain omelet placing one dessert spoonful of lightly braised onion on the omelet just before you fold folding the one-third over the onion serve on hot platter at once green pea omelet make as for plain omelet folding one tablespoonful french peas with a little thick cream sauce over them serve at once on hot platter asparagus omelet make as for plain omelet folding in one tablespoonful of asparagus tips which have been nicely seasoned serve on hot platter at once eggs a la mode bread crumbs two cups milk two cups eggs eight salt buttered toast or zwieback soak bread crumbs in milk beat eggs very light add the soaked bread crumbs and bake for five minutes have ready a hot oiled or buttered saucepan pour in the mixture salt and stir briskly for three minutes serve hot on squares of buttered toast or zwieback curdled eggs bring a kettle of water to a boil set at back of range for two minutes then drop in two eggs for each person and leave for eight minutes serve in cups jellied eggs cook the same as curdled eggs leaving eggs in fifteen minutes instead of eight shirred eggs oil a small platter or a granite egg dish break in fresh eggs being careful not to break the yolks sprinkle with minced parsley salt and add a bit of butter set in oven and bake till cooked as desired serve at once cream shirred eggs prepare eggs as for shirred eggs omitting parsley pour about one tablespoonful of rich cream over them salt set in oven and bake as desired serve at once floated eggs take two fresh eggs separate whites from yolks put yolks into a soup bowl of hot water being careful not to break them let set two minutes then place them bowl and all into a larger dish of boiling water and cook till set as desired two minutes for medium four minutes for hard meantime beat whites very stiff mold them in a soup bowl then float mold on boiling water two or three minutes till nicely set 
then place them on large platter place yolk in centre garnish with parsley and serve in removing whites from bowl take bowl in left hand knife in right dip bowl about one-third in water then slip knife under edge of mould in the water the water will get under eggs and float them out easily this makes a nice dish for the sick if yolks be boiled hard and whites are cooked rare baked eggs in tomato cases take nice ripe medium-sized tomatoes remove the stem and center with sharp paring knife or spoon sufficient to encase an egg nicely place them in an oiled granite baking pan break an egg into each tomato salt and sprinkle with chopped parsley and add a small piece of butter set in moderate oven and bake till eggs are medium done serve at once mumbled eggs milk one cup eggs six ranos biscuit three salt put milk on to heat in agate pan when it begins to boil break in the eggs and with a fork stir rapidly till it thickens it must not be as hard as scrambled eggs split granose biscuit in half and heat them in the oven a few minutes serve a spoonful of the mumbled eggs on each half of the biscuits do not forget to add salt scrambled eggs with sugar corn prepare as for scrambled eggs with protose using nice tender corn in place of protose salt and serve at once on hot platters scrambled eggs with onions prepare as for scrambled eggs with protose using one teaspoonful of lightly braised onion in place of protose salt and serve on hot platters at once scrambled eggs with protose cream or milk one tablespoonful for one person fresh eggs two minced protose one tablespoonful into an oiled skillet containing one tablespoon of cream or milk break the eggs slightly whipping them with egg whip or spoon then add protose stir to prevent sticking to bottom also to thoroughly mix egg with protose salt scramble soft medium or hard as desired serve at once on hot platters scrambled eggs with parsley prepare as for scrambled eggs with protose omitting protose and substituting minced parsley poached eggs on toast serve poached eggs on nice light brown slices of zwieback or fresh toast if preferred that has been slightly moistened not soaked with hot cream milk or water poached eggs take nice fresh eggs as only fresh eggs poach nicely break them into a pan of hot water almost boiling let pan set on range so that it will not boil poach as desired soft two minutes medium three minutes hard five minutes serve on platter garnish with watercress or parsley serve while very hot poached eggs on granos heat some granos in the oven a few minutes put a few spoonfuls on a plate and place poached eggs on top a small piece of butter may be added to each egg End of chapter 8、chapter 9 of The Vegetarian Cookbook by E. G. Fulton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Beverages Caramel cereal, a substitute for coffee. For each cup of the beverage required, use two tablespoonfuls of the cereal and boil for ten to twenty minutes. Then remove to the side of the range and let steep a few minutes. The strength and aroma of cereal coffee are developed by long steeping. Chocolate, Sanitas. Grate some Sanitas chocolate. Place in a saucepan and to each Two ounces allow one cup of cold water. Let it stand until the chocolate is soft. Place over the fire, and when it boils, cook one minute. Work it briskly with an egg beater, then serve at once, adding at the last moment a tablespoon of whipped cream to each cup. It is considered an improvement by some to use 
two-thirds chocolate and one-third malted nuts other chocolate is not recommended as it contains an injurious alkaloid which in the sanitas brand is removed by a special process fruit nectar for every eight parts of fruit juice used add one part of lemon juice and sweeten to taste a combination of fruit juices as grape cherry and raspberry makes a very nice nectar always using the lemon juice this nectar should be served ice cold strawberry sherbet ripe strawberries crushed four cups water four cups lemon sliced very thin one powdered sugar two cups mix the strawberries water and lemon together and let stand in glass or earthen jar for two hours strain through coarse cloth and add the powdered sugar when sugar is dissolved strain and keep on the ice until served mint julep sugar one cup mint sprigs six strawberry juice half cup juice of four lemons water one pint boiling water one cup raspberry juice half cup ice boil sugar and water twenty minutes crush mint and pour over it one cup boiling water let stand five or ten minutes strain and pour into the syrup to this add strawberry raspberry and lemon juices serve ice cold fruit cups lemons juice and rind twelve powdered sugar two and a half pounds ice ripe pineapple one water two quarts put into a dish the juice of the lemons and the rind sliced very thin slice the pineapple into another dish and pour over it half a pound of the powdered sugar let stand overnight in the morning strain off the juices and add the rest of the sugar and the water stir till the sugar is dissolved then strain through a coarse cloth and serve with crushed ice lemonade number one the best lemonade is made from lemon syrup into the juice of twelve lemons grate the rind of six be careful to exclude all seeds and the inner white skin as they impart a bitter taste let stand overnight make thick syrup of white sugar and when cold strain the lemon juice into it a tablespoon added to a glass of water makes a perfect lemonade lemonade number two three lemons to a pint of water makes a strong lemonade sweetened to taste orangeade sugar one cup water two cups orange juice two cups cracked ice boil sugar and water together ten minutes to make a syrup then add the orange juice and let it cool when cold pour into goblets half filled with cracked ice apollinaris lemonade juice of six lemons rind of four lemons sliced very thin sugar two cups apollinaris water ice cold quarter bottle cracked ice mix the lemon juice rind of the lemons and sugar together and add apollinaris water serve in goblets of cracked ice pineapple lemonade sugar one cup water two cups ice water about four cups juice of four lemons pineapple freshly grated one boil the sugar and water together ten minutes and then add lemon juice and freshly grated pineapple let this cool then strain carefully and add ice water about four cups End of chapter 9chapter ten of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt berard cereals grains may be considered perfect food in themselves as they contain all the food elements in nearly right proportions rice is an exception to this the starch being in excess in cooking grains in the form of porridges they should be introduced into rapidly salted water beating with a batter whisk 
so that the grains may be thoroughly mixed with the water and be free from lumps in cooking coarse grains as cracked wheat pearl barley hominy etc keep them boiling stirring occasionally until the grain does not sink to the bottom but hangs suspended in the water if the inner part of a double boiler has been used it may now be set into the outer boiler which should be placed on the range where the water will boil rapidly replenish the water in the outside boiler from time to time with boiling water by setting the grain in boiling water the indigestible outer portion or cellulose is more completely broken up and the starch granules are more thoroughly acted upon by the water the object being to cook the starch and the gluten as thoroughly as possible if the grains are cooked in a double boiler they will not need to be stirred after they are set except when cooked in a very large quantity the cooking should be continuous and the length of time varies according to the varying proportion of gluten in the grain the larger percentage of starch the shorter the time required in cooking grains combine nicely with fruits and may be cooked or served with either fruit or fruit juices oatmeal oatmeal one cup water one quart put water into a double boiler place on the range and when boiling add oatmeal boil until it thickens and finish in double boiler cook five hours rolled oats rolled oats one and a half cups water one quart put water into a double boiler place on the range and when boiling add rolled oats boil until it thickens and finish in double boiler cook four hours cracked wheat water four cups salt one teaspoonful cracked wheat one cup put water into the inner double boiler place on the range and when boiling add salt and cracked wheat boil rapidly until grains do not sink when the dish is lifted from the range place in the outer boiler and cook constantly for four or five hours pearl wheat water four cups pearl wheat washed one cup salt boil water in the inner double boiler add pearl wheat and salt place in the outer boiler and cook five or six hours pearl barley pearl barley well washed one cup water four cups put cold water into double boiler and add pearl barley heat slowly and cook about six hours farina milk or water six cups farina one cup salt put the milk or water in the inner part of a double boiler place on the range and when boiling add salt and farina let it boil for two or three minutes stirring all the time then place in a double boiler and cook one hour if milk is used it should first be simmered or scalded in a double boiler and then placed on the range and the milk will boil almost immediately in this way the milk will not be so liable to scorch as if it was put on the range at first this rule will apply to all grains cooked with milk rice southern style rice one cup salt one teaspoonful water six cups butter or gravy wash rice in two waters then put into vessel with water and salt after boiling about ten minutes strain off all the water except a scant cupful cover the vessel and let steam fifteen minutes or more stirring once or twice serve with butter or gravy the latter being stirred in quickly while the rice is hot rice western style rice one cup water six cups salt one tablespoonful wash rice put in kettle of water salt and boil till tender stirring once or twice to prevent sticking drain off all water through a colander and pour over hot water sufficient to wash off the starchy water and separate the grains 
leave in the colander and set into another pan so that the bottom of the colander will not touch cover and place in the oven a few minutes rice with raisins washed rice one cup raisins washed seeded half cup salt half teaspoonful water two cups put in an enameled pan cover and steam one hour browned rice rice may be browned in the oven until of a yellow straw color then cooked as any rice but preferably steamed care must be taken in browning that it does not scorch or get too brown cornmeal mush salted water four cups cornmeal one cup into the salted water stir cornmeal till it begins to thicken and finish cooking in a double boiler cook three or four hours graham porridge graham flour one cup boiling water salted three cups stir the flour into boiling water and beat till perfectly smooth set in a double boiler or in another vessel containing boiling water and cook one hour graham porridge with dates set as for plain graham porridge after it has cooked one half hour beat in the desired quantity of washed seeded and chopped dates let it cook half an hour longer and serve gluten granola mush boiling milk or water one quart mixed gluten and granola one and a half pints cook fifteen minutes and serve with cream End of chapter ten Chapter 11 of The Vegetarian Cookbook by E. G. Fulton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Toasts. Toasts are uniformly and properly regarded as a breakfast dish, and when properly prepared are wholesome, nutritious, and appetizing, and far more conducive to health than the fried mushes and griddle cakes with which so many are prone to appease their appetites. Zweiback should be used as the foundation of all toasts, although ordinary toasted bread can be used. In toasting bread, do not expose it to such fierce heat that the bread will be burned or singed. Singed bread is not toasted bread. Again, the fire should be hot enough to more than simply dry the bread. It should be toasted as far through as possible, and should be crisp and brittle, not hard. In using Zweiback for toast, it may be moistened by hot milk, if for cream, gravy, or egg toast, or with hot salted water, if for fruit. In either case, the toast should be dipped quickly in and out again, so as not to absorb too much liquid and become mushy under this head a few kinds of toasts will be given inexpensive and otherwise while it is not an exhaustive list it will include sufficient to suggest others equally good milk toast milk six cups flour one heaped teaspoonful butter one tablespoonful toasted bread or zwieback heat milk and butter in a saucepan over the fire when boiling add salt and flour moistened with a little milk let it boil remove from the fire and dip into this slices of toasted bread or zwieback pour what remains over the toast cover and send to the table hot cream toast cream six cups zwieback milk heat cream to boiling dip slices of zwieback into hot milk for an instant place on saucer Pour hot cream over and serve. American or French toast. Eggs, thoroughly beaten, three. Salt, butter, milk, three cups, sliced bread. Beat the eggs thoroughly and add the milk and a little salt. Slice light bread and dip into the mixture, allowing each slice to absorb some of the milk. Then brown on a hot buttered griddle or thick 
bottom frying pan spread with butter and serve hot boston cream toast toast two slices of bread trim and cut in two lengthwise making four pieces place these evenly on top of one another and cut again cornerwise into long triangular pieces arrange artistically on a platter and serve with cream sauce nun's toast hard-boiled eggs six flour one teaspoonful butter hot buttered toast finely chopped onion one milk two cups put the butter into a saucepan and when it begins to bubble add the chopped onion let the onion cook a little without color then stir in the flour add the milk and stir till it becomes smooth then put in the eggs which have been sliced and let them get hot pour this mixture over neatly trimmed slices of hot buttered toast seasoned with salt nut gravy toast dress moistened toast with nut gravy as given under sauces prune whipped toast prune pulp two cups sugar one tablespoonful eggs whites four beat the whites very stiff and stir in the hot prune pulp and sugar serve on slices of zwieback which have been dipped in hot water prune toast prepare as for apricot toast using prune marmalade date toast prepare as for prune toast except that the dates should be steamed not boiled protose toast minced protose two cups eggs two sweet cream half cup salt to taste mix and heat thoroughly when boiling hot spread over slices of toasted bread dipped in hot salt water and well buttered take hard-boiled egg one cut in halves remove yolk and fill whole with currant jelly and place on top of the protose nuttoline on toast mince half a pound of nuttoline very fine put in a well-oiled saucepan and fry over the fire till a delicate brown great care must be taken to prevent scorching shake the pan often make two cups of rich cream sauce well seasoned with butter sauce and desiccated coconut strain this over the nuttoline and serve a spoonful on warm toast this makes six large portions berry toast any canned fruit as strawberries blackberries blueberries etc may be used for toasts strain off the juice boil and thicken with cornstarch to the consistency of cream stir in the strawberries and reheat till the berries are well heated through serve as other fruit toasts banana toast number one peel and rub some nice bananas through a fine colander sweeten and beat up with a little cream and serve on moistened toast serve cold banana toast two take the desired quantity of bright fruit juice as strawberry or cherry boil and thicken with cornstarch into this slice some ripe bananas the juice should not be too thick but just so that the banana will appear suspended in the juice serve on moistened toast date toast with walnuts prepare same as date toast then serve with walnut meat on each corner and one in the center tomato toast dress moistened toast with tomato sauce as given under sauces or use drained tomatoes thickened with flour or cornstarch asparagus toast prepare as for stewed asparagus moisten and butter a piece of toast lay four or five pieces of asparagus on it pour a spoonful of white sauce on the bottom end of the stalks and serve apple toast fresh stewed apples rubbed through a colander and sweetened make a nice dressing the apples may be flavored with lemon or mixed with grape or cranberry sauce when the apples are put in the colander the liquid may be poured into a saucepan and boiled into a syrup and the toast moistened with this serve a spoonful or two of the applesauce over all apricot toast 
in making apricot marmalade save the juice by itself and boil it down into a syrup moisten the toast pour over some of the syrup and some of the marmalade over all end of chapter eleven chapter twelve of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Matt Perard. Bakery and Breakfast Dishes Thin batters are about the consistency of thin cream. Thick batters are like cream. Still thicker batters, which may be poured in a continuous stream, are called poor batters. Any batter is a poor batter until it is made so stiff that it breaks or drops in the pouring when it is called a drop batter it will remain a batter until too stiff to be beaten when it becomes a dough doughs like batters are of varying degrees of thickness ranging from those just stiff enough to be handled to those which may be rolled thin as paper generally speaking one full measure of flour to one scant measure of liquid makes a poor batter two full measures of flour make a drop batter and three full measures make a dough although for various reasons these proportions are subject to many modifications if the ingredients in batters were simply mixed and cooked slowly the resulting substances would be hard and compact unfit for human digestion hence to obviate this and to make them light and porous we must resort to other processes this is accomplished by means of the expansion of incorporated air by the generation of gas within the mixture or by a combination of both methods supplemented by quick cooking before the gas has a chance to escape air at seventy degrees expands to about three times its volume when exposed to the temperature of a hot oven consequently as a mixture heats in cooking incorporated air expands giving the desired lightness air is incorporated or enclosed in batters by beating the mixture thoroughly as in making whole wheat gems by adding eggs to the beaten mixture as in popovers and by the gas obtained by the union of an acid with an alkaline carbonate as in the use of baking powders in batters made light by the admixture of air one must exercise care in beating to actually incorporate and retain the air when eggs are added to the mixture the glutinous consistency of the albumen they contain assists in retaining the entangled air gems or puffs plain milk one cup salt cooking oil one tablespoonful if desired egg one sifted flour about two cups break the egg into the milk add salt and beat thoroughly beat into this enough sifted flour to make a batter that will pile slightly when poured in a thick stream bake in hot greased gem irons in a brisk oven a tablespoonful of cooking oil may be added to the milk if a richer batter is desired corn gems make same as plain gems but use one-fourth cornmeal and a little sugar whole wheat and graham gems use one-fourth to one-third whole wheat or graham flour granos puffs eggs four ground cinnamon one teaspoonful salt sugar quarter cup granose flakes four cups beat the yolks of the eggs with the sugar until light then add the cinnamon and salt beat again then add two cups granose flakes mix thoroughly and add half of the stiffly beaten whitest of the eggs then two more cups of granose flakes and lastly the rest of the whites drop in round gem irons filling them heaping full and bake a light brown they may be iced and a little shredded coconut sprinkled on top vegetarian hot cakes 
bread crumbs four cups flour one cup salt one teaspoonful sugar as desired mix all together thoroughly and add sufficient milk heated at one forty degrees or one fifty degrees to make a thick pour batter to this add the yolks of five eggs beat up thoroughly and add the stiffly beaten whites bake on soapstone griddle be careful not to have the milk scalding hot as it renders cakes soft and sticky green corn griddle cakes corn one quart cut from the ear butter two tablespoonfuls white cornmeal three tablespoonfuls salt quarter teaspoonful milk one cup eggs four flour half cup mix thoroughly and bake on soapstone griddle baked corn pie sweet corn one can milk two cups salt one teaspoonful butter two tablespoonfuls eggs two warm the butter and stir through the corn beat the eggs with the milk add the salt and mix with the butter and the corn turn into a pan and bake until set should be light brown popovers flour two cups milk one and three quarter cups butter salt half level teaspoonful eggs three mix the salt and flour pour on slowly half the milk to make a smooth batter add the eggs one at a time beating well and gradually the remaining milk beat vigorously for a few minutes then turn at once into hot well buttered gem pans filling them about half full bake in rather hot oven from twenty to thirty minutes cornbread without baking powder number one cornmeal two cups eggs four salt boiling milk three cups butter size of egg put the meal into the mixing bowl make hollow in the center put in butter and salt and pour the hot milk over all and stir well let cool and if too stiff add a little more cold milk break the eggs and separate them add the yolks to the meal and beat five minutes beat the whites and add them to the batter oil a baking pan make it hot and turn in the batter bake in a quick oven thirty minutes hoe cake cornmeal four cups water or milk melted butter one tablespoonful salt and sugar as desired sift cornmeal with a little salt and sugar if desired scald with sufficient water or milk to make a stiff batter but soft enough to spread easily with a knife a tablespoonful of melted butter may be added if desired spread on a baking sheet or pan about one half inch thick or less and bake slowly till crisp clear through if the cake bakes fast on the bottom it may be turned over so that both sides may be evenly baked cornbread without baking powder number two cornmeal two cups flour one cup salt one teaspoonful sugar quarter cup mix and add boiling water sufficient to make stiff dough let cool then stir in butter one tablespoonful beaten yolks six and lastly the stiffly beaten whites six cornbread number three sponge three cups butter one rounded tablespoonful mixture two parts cornmeal to one part flour eggs two sugar three heaped tablespoonfuls take three cups of the sponge as set for making wheat bread measured when light ready to mix up stiff add sugar eggs and butter to this add a mixture of two-thirds cornmeal and one-third flour until it is as stiff as will stir conveniently if made too stiff the bread will be dry if not stiff enough it will be sticky put about half an inch deep in greased pans and let rise till nearly an inch deep and bake in a moderate oven it may be in deeper loaves but they are not likely to be so satisfactory georgia pones 
Southern cornmeal, two cups. Sugar, one tablespoonful. Salt, half teaspoonful. Boiling milk or cream. Sift meal with sugar and salt. Pour over this enough boiling milk or cream to make a stiff drop batter. Stir constantly that the meal may not lump. When perfectly smooth, drop in large spoonfuls on a cold buttered baking sheet and bake in a brisk oven. The pones should be browned on top. Boston Brown Bread Yellow cornmeal, one cup. White flour, three-fourths cup. Salt, one teaspoonful. Eggs, four. Graham flour, one cup. New Orleans molasses, good. Three-fourths cup. Milk, about three cups. Mix meal, flour, molasses, and milk. Separate eggs and mix yolks with other ingredients. Beat whites very stiff and fold into mixture, which should not be thick. Put this in the tin dish immediately and steam for three or four hours. End of chapter 12《Pudding Puddings》Lemon Apple Tart Apples 6 Sugar 1 Cup Lemon 1 Pare the apples and remove the core, being careful not to break the apple. Put into a granite or enameled baking pan of suitable size. Fill the hole made by removing the cores with the sugar. Moisten the sugar with the lemon juice and sprinkle a little of the grated rind on each apple. Pour sufficient water into the pan to half cover the apples. Cover and bake until clear. Farina mold. Milk, one quart. Sugar, one third cup. Farina, half cup. Salt. Put the milk into double boiler. When scalding hot, Set the inner boiler on range until the milk boils. Then stir in the farina, sugar, and salt. Let boil till the farina is set. Then set back in outer boiler and cook one hour. Turn into molds previously oiled or dipped into cold water. May be served with cream, sweetened and flavored, or with fruit juice. Brown bedding. Chopped apples, two cups. Bread crumbs, one cup. Butter, half cup chopped raisins one cup raisin or prune juice one cup fill a pudding dish with alternate layers of the fruit crumbs and butter fruit first finishing bread crumbs on top pour over the fruit juice set the dish in a pan of hot water cover and bake in a moderate oven for nearly an hour then remove the cover and brown slightly Serve with sweetened cream or lemon sauce. Strawberry shortcake. Cream, one cup. Flour to make a medium soft dough. Salt. Yeast, one tablespoonful. Warm the cream to about 70 degrees. Add the salt, yeast, and about two cups of the flour. Mix thoroughly. Cover and set in a warm place to rise. When well risen and lively, add the rest of the flour and leave until perfectly smooth. Roll out about half an inch thick. Put in greased pans, brush the top with melted butter, let rise until about double its original size, and bake. Split and fill with whole or crushed berries, sprinkled with sugar. Strawberry Granos Put a layer of granos in a deep pan of sufficient size, Cover with a layer of crushed berries and sugar. Repeat till the pan is full. Press lightly. Serve with cream. Floating Island Milk, one quart. Sugar, half cup. Eggs, five. Jelly, two tablespoonfuls. Flavor to suit. Make a custard with the milk, the yolks of the egg, the whites of two, and the sugar. Whip the remaining three whites to a stiff froth with a little sugar and flavoring, same as custard. Pour the custard into individual glass dishes. Drop spoonfuls of the whites on the custard so as to form islands. 
or it may be put on with a pastry tube or paper funnel. Drop a little bright jelly in the center of each island. Cornstarch blancmange. Milk, one quart. Cornstarch, four heaped tablespoonfuls. Eggs, whites, three. Sugar, half cup. Lemon flavoring. Put out the milk in a double boiler and set over the fire. When scalding hot, add the remaining milk in which has been dissolved the sugar and cornstarch. Stir till it is thick and there are no lumps. Flavor with lemon. Take from the range and add the stiffly beaten whites. Pour into molds and set in a cold place to get firm. A pleasing effect may be obtained by dividing the mixture after it is cooked and coloring one half pink, then filling the mold one third of one and filling up with the other. When turned from the mold, they will look like small white pyramids capped with pink or pink with white. A custard to be served with this blancmange is made of two cups of milk, the yolks of three eggs, and half a cup of sugar. Flavor same as blancmange. Granos mold. Boiling milk, two cups. Granos flakes, three cups. Sugar, two tablespoonfuls. Beaten eggs, six. Stir the granos flakes into the boiling milk. Then add the beaten eggs and sugar. Let boil two minutes and pour into molds. Serve with vanilla sauce. Pineapple tapioca. Pearl tapioca, one cup. Pineapple, ripe, one. Water, one quart. Sugar, one cup. Wash the tapioca and put to cook with the water and sugar in a double boiler. Cook until cleared. Pare the pineapple, remove the core, and slice very thin. Put a layer of the pineapple in a deep pan. Pour over some of the tapioca, then another layer of pineapple, and so on, till all of the pineapple and tapioca are used. Serve cold. Banana tapioca. Same as pineapple tapioca, but use bananas instead of pineapples. Milk may be substituted for water, and two eggs used if desired. The tapioca may be flavored and colored it, if desired. Dates stuffed with malted nuts. Wash, dry, and pit the desired quantity of dates, being careful not to break more than are necessary. Fill the cavity made by removing the pit with malted nuts, and press together. Make an icing of the white of an egg, eight or nine tablespoonfuls of powdered sugar, a few drops of lemon juice, and one teaspoonful of cornstarch. Dip the dates in this, using a sharp toothpick with which to handle them, and place on an oiled paper or plate to dry, or the icing may be made with less sugar, and after they are dipped, roll them in powdered or victor sugar. Sago fruit. Sago, one cup. Sugar, half cup. Oranges, two. Wash the sago through three waters and simmer in a quart of water with the sugar until transparent and thoroughly done. Peel and slice the oranges, remove the pips, and add to the sago. Cook a few minutes longer, then turn into six or eight individual glass sauce dishes and put away to cool. Garnish with a little bright colored jelly or jam. Rice patties. Rice, cooked, two cups. Butter, one and a half tablespoonfuls. Egg whites, well beaten, two. Sugar, one tablespoonful. Nutmeg. Mix and stir over the fire till well blended. When cold, form into patties. Roll into beaten white of egg and then in bread crumbs moistened with melted butter. Bake. Serve hot with sweetened cream flavored with nutmeg. Lemon omelet. Cornstarch, one dessert spoonful. Cream, half cup. Eggs, four. Butter. Powdered sugar. Flour, one teaspoonful. Salt. Boiling milk, one cup. Lemon honey. Mix the cornstarch, flour, cream, and salt. Beat till smooth. Add the beaten yolks of the eggs and the boiling milk. Stir in the whites of the eggs, beaten to a stiff froth. Butter four pudding plates, pour in the mixture, and bake in a quick oven ten minutes. 
Spread lemon honey on half, fold over, and sprinkle powdered sugar on top. Serve hot. Lemon honey. White sugar, one cup. Egg yolks, three. Butter, one tablespoonful. Lemon, grated rind, and juice of one. Egg white. Put the juice, sugar, and butter in a double boiler over the fire. While it is melting, beat the eggs and add to them the grated rind of the lemon. Add this to the sugar and butter, cooking and stirring till it is thick and clear like honey. Strawberry Souffle Fruit Fresh strawberries, three quarts. Powdered sugar, one and a half cups. Custard, egg yolks, four. Cream or milk, three-fourths pint. Sugar. Meringue, egg whites, four. Put two and a half quarts of the strawberries and the powdered sugar into a saucepan. Put in oven and let it simmer till sugar is melted. Beat the yolks of the eggs in the cream or milk and sweeten to taste. Set in double boiler over the fire and stir until thick. Arrange the berries without the juice in glass dishes so that they will form a sort of wall. Fill the center with custard and meringue the top with the whites. Use the remaining two cups of berries to decorate the meringue with half or whole berries. Serve hot or cold. Plain custard. Sugar, three-fourths cup. Eggs, six. Milk, one quart. Salt. Beat the eggs till light and stir in the milk, sugar, and salt. Bake in a pudding pan. Set in a pan of hot water. Bake until the center of custard is set. Caramel custard. Milk, three cups. Butter, one tablespoonful. Water, half cup. Sugar, one cup. Eggs, six. Vanilla, half teaspoonful. Put the butter into a saucepan and set on the range. When melted, stir in the sugar and let it cook until of a dark brown color, stirring frequently to prevent burning. Now add the water, which should be hot, and stir until the caramel, the brown sugar, is dissolved. Beat up the eggs and mix with the milk. Add to this the caramel and flavor with the vanilla. Pour into custard cups, set into a shallow pan of water, and bake till the custard is set in the middle. Tapioca Custard Rich Tapioca, half cup. Sugar, three-fourths cup. Salt, quarter teaspoonful, milk, one quart, eggs, four, flavor to suit. Wash the tapioca and put to cook with the milk in a double boiler. Stir occasionally and cook till clear. Beat the eggs till light. Beat in the sugar and add to the tapioca. Let cook a minute and remove from the range. Stir in the flavoring and turn into a pan of suitable size. Serve cold. If desired, the whites of two of the eggs may be used as a meringue, which should be flavored the same as the custard. Rice pudding. Rice, four tablespoonfuls. Sugar, two tablespoonfuls. Seedless raisins, half cup. Milk, four cups. Grated nutmeg, quarter teaspoonful. Salt, half teaspoonful. Put all together and bake about two hours. Stir with a fork three or four times during first hour to prevent sticking. Should it get too dry, add a little more milk. Cream rice pudding. Washed rice, half cup. Cream or milk, three cups. Eggs, four. Cook the rice in the cream or milk. When nearly done, remove from the range and stir in the yolks of the eggs. Pour into a pan and set in another containing water and bake 15 or 20 minutes, or till the eggs are cooked. Make a meringue of the whites. Sanitas Chocolate Pudding Bread crumbs, 2 cups Eggs, 3 Sanitas Chocolate, quarter pound Hot milk, 2 cups Sugar, 1 third cup Soak bread crumbs in hot milk. Add eggs, sugar, and chocolate. Beat the eggs and mix all the ingredients thoroughly. Put into a buttered can and steam two hours. See note under beverages, Sanitas chocolate. Apple nut pudding. Apple pulp, two cups. Nuttoline, half pound. 
eggs four sugar three fourth cup bread crumbs one and three fourth pounds cinnamon or nutmeg one teaspoonful grate sufficient tart apples to make two cups then add the sugar cinnamon or nutmeg bread crumbs nuttolene which has been put through a vegetable grinder and the beaten yolks of the eggs beat well and add the stiffly beaten whites put into an oiled pudding pan set in a pan of boiling water and bake serve with sweetened cream or flavored sauce prune tapioca pudding tapioca half cup cold water two and a half cups lemon juice one tablespoonful prunes one cup salt half teaspoonful sugar half cup put the prunes into enough water to cover them and let simmer gently till they absorb all the water turn onto a plate to cool and remove stones when tapioca has cooked until clear put all the seasoning into it and put a layer into a pudding dish then a layer of prunes and so on having the top layer tapioca bake in a moderate oven one hour then allow to partially cool and serve with cream prune pudding prune pulp one cup prune meats chopped fine quarter cup egg whites well beaten four sugar half cup stir the beaten whites of the eggs with the prune pulp and add the chopped prune meats and sugar bake till lightly browned and serve with cream bread pudding milk one quart sugar half cup stale bread one and a half cups eggs three flavor to suit soak the bread in the milk beat the yolks and one of the whites of the eggs with the sugar and flavor mix and put into a pudding dish set into a pan of hot water and bake until the custard is set meringue with the whites if desired the top of the pudding may first be marked with jelly marmalade or fresh fruit of some kind and the meringue put over all pressed fruit pudding bread eight slices stewed huckleberries one quart sugar half cup trim the bread cutting off all crusts put four slices in the bottom of a pudding pan cover with half the berries which should have the juice strained off sprinkle over part of the sugar then the rest of the bread and the remainder of the berries and sugar pour over all the juice that has been drained there should be enough to moisten the bread thoroughly if served the same day put another pan on top of the pudding with a weight in it to press the pudding it is not necessary to press the pudding if not used the same day it is made serve with sweetened cream or sweet sauce snow pudding milk one quart salt one-third teaspoonful eggs whites five sugar one-third cup cornstarch one-third cup vanilla to suit set milk sugar and salt in a double boiler over the fire when scalding hot add the cornstarch mixed smooth in a little cold milk when the starch is cooked remove from the fire and beat well when cold stir in carefully the stiffly beaten whites and flavor with vanilla serve with vanilla sauce apple pudding baked butter two tablespoonfuls eggs four green tart apples grated six sugar half cup lemon one stir the butter and sugar to a cream stir into this the well-beaten yolks of the eggs the juice and grated rind of the lemon and the grated apples stir in the beaten whites of the eggs flavor with cinnamon or nutmeg and bake serve cold with cream plum pudding eggs four cream one cup flour one and three-fourths cups raisins seeded chopped half pound dried cherries half pound candied orange peel two ounces sugar one cup bread crumbs one cup butter one-third pound currants half pound candied citron two ounces beat the eggs add the cream bread crumbs flour and butter beat well together and mix in the sugar and fruit mix well pour into a buttered pan cover and steam about two hours cabinet pudding candied citron half cup seedless raisins half cup 
currants half cup cinnamon nutmeg stale sponge cake one quart milk two cups eggs two butter melted one tablespoonful salt butter a pudding mold that will hold at least two quarts have the citron and raisins chopped fine the currants well washed and the cake cut into strips about an inch and a half wide and half an inch thick sprinkle some of the fruit on the bottom of the mold then slices of the cake sprinkle on a little cinnamon and nutmeg then more fruit then cake and so on till the ingredients are all used pour over this a custard made of the milk eggs and melted butter pour this over the cake without cooking and let soak one half hour then set into a pan of water cover and bake until the custard is set serve with a tart sauce cream sago pudding sago half cup sugar one cup milk or cream one quart eggs two lemon flavoring wash the sago and with the milk put into a double boiler and cook until clear beat the eggs very light and add the sugar and flavor remove the sago from the range and allow to cool a little then pour in the eggs and sugar beating all the time put in a pudding pan set in a pan of water cover and bake until the custard is set steamed fruit pudding tart apple pulp two cups sugar one cup eggs six grape juice two and a half cups salt half teaspoonful toasted bread crumbs four cups seedless raisins one cup lemon rind grated one vanilla one tablespoonful mix all well together except the whites of the eggs which should be beaten stiff and added last turn into a buttered mold and steam or boil for three hours serve with sweetened cream flavored with flavored with nutmeg sponge pudding milk two cups flour half cup sugar one-third cup eggs four put milk into a double boiler mix the sugar and flour with a little cold milk pour this into the scalding milk and stir till it thickens then stir it into the well-beaten yolks of the eggs then add the whites beaten stiff pour the mixture into buttered cups or into a pudding dish put the cup or dish into a pan of boiling water place in the oven and bake twenty minutes after five minutes before it is done remove from the pan of water and finish baking on the grate serve in the cups in which it is baked or on hot plates if baked in a pudding dish this should not be allowed to stand but be served immediately fig pudding butter two tablespoonfuls cornstarch half cup flour half cup fig marmalade one and one fourth cups cream one and a half cups sugar one cup eggs four mix the butter with the cornstarch and flour mix the fig marmalade and the cream stir in the butter cornstarch and flour mixture together with the sugar and the yolks of eggs mix well and fold in quickly the well-beaten whites pour into a buttered pudding pan and steam one and one half hours date pudding make same as fig pudding using date marmalade adelaide pudding eggs six water two cups lemon extract one teaspoonful salt one teaspoonful cornstarch one cup sugar one and a quarter cups lemon grated rind and juice one flour one and a half cups over the beaten yolks pour a syrup made by boiling the sugar in the water add lemon rind and juice lemon extract and salt beat up well and mix in slowly the flour and cornstarch fold in the beaten whites of the eggs pour into a greased pudding dish and steam one and one half hours cereal pudding milk four cups eggs four sugar half cup cream of maize or cerealine two cups lemon grated rind and juice one heat milk to boiling and stir in cream of maize or cerealine set in double boiler and cook half an hour remove from range and stir in the yolks and sugar flavor with grated rind and juice of lemon pour in a shallow pan and set within another containing water and bake 
till the custard sets meringue with the whites end of chapter thirteen chapter fourteen of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard pies pastry dough for pies flour one pint butter three tablespoonfuls rounding full or olive oil half cup salt one teaspoonful cold water six tablespoonfuls chop the butter in the flour add the water and salt and without mixing turn upon the board roll out and double over three times then roll out again and double continue this till the crust is smooth then roll out very thin and roll as for jelly cake cut into two pieces stand each piece on end and roll out one for the top and the other for the bottom crust pumpkin for pies wash the pumpkin but do not peel remove the seeds cut up cook and put through a colander the pumpkin is much sweeter cooked this way than when the peel is removed before cooking pumpkin pies mashed pumpkin one cup molasses one third cup sugar one third cup salt one teaspoonful flour one tablespoonful eggs two cinnamon one teaspoonful milk one cup mix all together thoroughly adding the milk last pumpkin pies without eggs mashed pumpkin one cup flour one tablespoonful sugar half cup nutmeg a dash mix together and when smooth add sweet cream one cup sanitas chocolate custard pie number one milk one quart sugar one cup eggs six chocolate quarter pound water two cups vanilla two teaspoonfuls save the whites of three of the eggs for meringue beat together the remainder of the eggs sugar and vanilla dissolve the chocolate in the water and boil for three minutes when nearly cold add to the eggs and sugar put in a pan lined with good pastry and bake makes two large or three small pies Sinatus chocolate custard pie number two make an ordinary custard pie flavor with vanilla put the grated chocolate into a basin on the side of the range where it will melt but not burn when melted beat into it one egg and sugar to suit the taste spread on top of the pie hygienic mincemeat for six pies chopped apples medium size fourteen chopped walnuts one cup chopped blanched almonds half cup chopped figs half cup chopped citron quarter cup seeded raisins one cup seedless raisins or currants one cup caramel cereal coffee one cup fruit juice or jelly one cup lemons juice of four salt one tablespoonful sugar and spice to taste mince pie minced apples four cups prune juice one cup sugar one cup molasses one cup butter two tablespoonfuls minced protose three cups seedless raisins two cups lemon grated rind and juice one stew all together until thick enough for filling flavor with salt one teaspoonful cinnamon nutmeg baker's custard pie sugar three tablespoonfuls eggs three vanilla one teaspoonful salt to taste flour one tablespoonful milk two cups grated nutmeg beat the yolks of the eggs to a cream stir the flour thoroughly into the sugar and add to the eggs then put in the vanilla nutmeg and salt then add well-beaten whites mix well and add by degrees the milk that has been scalded and cooled but not boiled and turn all into a deep pie pan lined with rich paste bake from twenty five to thirty minutes lemon pie superior lemons three water three cups cornstarch two tablespoonfuls butter one tablespoonful sugar two and a half cups eggs three 
flour four tablespoonfuls put the water and butter into a double boiler and set on the range mix the sugar flour and cornstarch together grate in the lemon rind and add the juice and beaten yolks of the eggs when the water in the boiler is scalding hot stir in the mixture and cook till of the consistency of cold honey stirring now and then to ensure even cooking remove from the fire when cool pour into deep pie tins lined with good pastry when done meringue with the whites of the eggs coconut pie desiccated coconut half cup eggs two butter size of an egg milk one cup sugar one small cup soak the coconut in the milk add the beaten egg sugar and butter melted line a pie pan with rich pastry put in the filling and bake the white of one of the eggs may be used as a meringue if desired washington cream pie crust eggs six vanilla one teaspoonful flour one rounded cup sugar one cup lemon juice two teaspoonfuls beat the yolks of the eggs till very thick add the sugar vanilla and lemon juice beat the whites of the eggs very stiff fold half the whites into the yolk and sugar then half the flour then the remainder of the whites and the rest of the flour divide this batter into two pie pans and bake when cold split each cake and put in the filling filling milk two cups eggs two flour half cup butter two tablespoonfuls sugar one cup vanilla one and a half teaspoonfuls put three-fourths of the milk into a double boiler together with the milk and set on the range beat the eggs very light add the sugar flour and the remainder of the milk beat till perfectly smooth and when the milk in the boiler is scalding hot stir in the mixture beat till smooth and cook thoroughly when cool add the vanilla if made a day or two before serving and kept on ice the quality of these pies is greatly improved prune pie prune marmalade one pint egg one lemon one sugar half cup to the marmalade add the grated rind and juice of the lemon sugar and beaten yolk of egg put into a pie pan lined with good paste and bake till the crust is done remove from oven and meringue with the white of the egg apple pie line a pie pan with rich paste sprinkle over the bottom a little flour and sugar fill with apples cut in thin slices the pan should be slightly rounding full sprinkle a little flour and sugar according to the tartness of the fruit add two tablespoonfuls of water and a few small pieces of butter moisten the edge of the paste and put on the upper crust press down the edges trim make several perforations in the top to allow the steam to escape brush the crust with a little milk and bake about forty-five minutes rhubarb pie pie paste rhubarb four cups sugar one large cup nutmeg salt flour line a pie plate with paste rolled a little thicker than a dollar strip the skin off the rhubarb and cut the stalk into half inch lengths fill the plate an inch deep and to a quart of rhubarb add a large cup of sugar sprinkle a pinch of salt and a grating of nutmeg on top with a little flour cover with a rich crust and bake in a quick oven until the pie loosens from the dish blueberry pie line a pie pan with pie paste put in the berries half an inch deep and to one quart of berries put a teacup of brown sugar sift a teaspoon of flour over a pinch of salt and a little grated nutmeg cover with the top crust pressing down the edges tightly trim and bake in a good oven forty-five minutes this pie is the typical berry pie End of chapter 14chapter 15 of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this LibriVox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter 15 cake frosting egg white beaten stiff one 
cornstarch one teaspoonful powdered sugar nine tablespoonfuls lemon or orange juice one teaspoonful mix and beat together sunshine cake egg whites six egg yolks three sugar granulated one cup flour one scant cup lemon juice two teaspoonfuls mix and bake as for favorite sponge cake flavor with grated rind of lemon juice of half orange orange cake if boiled icing flavored with orange is used the result will be orange cake angel cake flour one cup sifted five times lemon juice two teaspoonfuls powdered sugar sifted one cup egg whites eleven beaten to stiff froth vanilla two teaspoonfuls stir the sugar into the whites very lightly and carefully adding the vanilla after which add the flour stirring quickly and lightly pour into a bright clean cake dish which should not be buttered or lined bake it once in a moderate oven about forty minutes test it with a broom splint when done let it remain in the cake ten turning it upside down with the sides resting on two saucers so that a current of air will pass over and under it sponge sheet use and make the ingredients the same as for simple sponge cake but bake in a sheet before baking sprinkle a generous quantity of the following mixture on top mix an equal quantity of granulated sugar and chopped almonds and and add a small pinch of ground cinnamon this produces a delicious crust bake in a buttered and floured pan and remove from the pan as soon as done simple sponge cake eggs six sifted granulated sugar one cup flour one scant cup to the eggs add sugar and beat with a wire egg beater till the mixture is thick and light colored then add the flour folding it in gently drop by the spoonful in an unbuttered pan and bake in a moderate oven when done invert the pan letting it rest on cups until the cake is cool when it can be easily taken out thus suspended from the bottom of the pan the cake is stretched by its own weight which makes it lighter and more elastic than if left to fall by its own weight in cooling the quantity given will make a small loaf cake or two layers favorite sponge cake eggs six granulated sugar one cup flour one scant cup lemon juice two teaspoonfuls sift the flour and sugar four or five times beat the whites of the egg to a stiff froth adding the lemon juice when half beaten fold in carefully in regular order the sugar well beaten yolks of eggs and the flour bake in a moderate oven nut sponge cake eggs seven water quarter cup lemon extract quarter teaspoonful ground english walnut three-fourths cup sugar one and a quarter cups vanilla one teaspoonful flour one rounded cup beat the yolks of the eggs till thick boil sugar and water till it spins a thread pour this into the yolks beating all the time till cool add the vanilla and lemon extract mix flour with walnuts mix all together and lastly stir in the stiffly beaten whites bake in tins lined with greased paper marguerites egg white one partly beaten sugar two tablespoonfuls chopped walnuts half cup stir together and spread on crackers one inch wide by three or four inches long bake a light brown sponge jelly cake eggs five lemons one sugar one cup flour one cup beat the yolks till very thick add sugar gradually then the grated rind and two tablespoonfuls of lemon juice fold in one half of the whites of the eggs beaten very stiff then one half of the flour the other half of the whites lastly the remainder of the flour bake in a large dripping pan fifteen minutes turn on to a cloth trim the edges spread the jelly and roll up wrap in the cloth and set aside to cool 
almond macaroons egg whites five rind of one lemon almond meat one scant cup sugar two cups flour one cup beat eggs stiff add sugar and beat very stiff add lemon rind grated mix and add flour and almond meal drop on oiled pans in pieces the size of a walnut allowing plenty of room between each smooth with a knife dipped in water bake a light brown end of chapter fifteen chapter sixteen of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Reading by Matt Perard. Chapter 16. Nut Butter. Nut Butter. Nut Butter can be easily made in the home, but nearly all the prepared nut foods on sale require expensive machinery and a steam plant to produce, hence cannot be made in the home. Peanuts and almonds are the nuts most suitable for making nut butter. The other varieties are difficult to blanch and do not make good butter. The best variety of peanuts for making nut butter is the Spanish shelled. They are the most easily blanched. Removing the skins from the nuts after they are shelled is called blanching. Peanuts cannot be blanched unless they have been thoroughly heated. To properly cook peanuts is the essential thing to produce a healthful, palatable nut butter. This can be accomplished if care is exercised. There are three ways of cooking them, namely baking or roasting, boiling, and steaming. The baking process is the easiest way, but care should be used not to scorch them. Scorched or burnt peanuts are unfit to use in any form. Process number one. Put a layer of peanuts about one half inch deep in a dripping pan and place on perforated shelf in a moderate oven. Allow them to bake slowly for about one hour. Cook them until they are a light brown or straw color. Shake the pan or stir the peanuts every few minutes. When the kernels begin to crack and pop, they brown very quickly and should be watched closely. A splendid way to cook them is to fill a tight covered dish about two-thirds full, place in the oven, and shake occasionally. When cooked this way, they are not so liable to burn, and they retain their flavor better. When they have cooked sufficiently, spread out at once. When they have become quite cool, blanch as follows. This can be done by rubbing them in the hands, or, what is better, a coarse bag, or take a piece of cloth and fold the ends together, forming a bag. Another good device is a screen made of coarse wire. Rub them until the skins are loose. The chaff can be removed by using a fan or by pouring them from one dish to another where the wind is blowing. Look them over carefully, removing defective nuts and foreign substances. The next step is to grind them. The most practical family mill we know of for grinding nuts, etc., is the Quaker City Mill. See cut and description of same in this book. Always grind freshly cooked nuts, as they do not make good butter when left a day or two after being cooked. Process number two. Thoroughly heat the nuts in an oven, but do not let them brown. Allow them to cool, then blanch as described in process number one. Boil them from three to four hours until they are tender. Drain, spread out on tins, and thoroughly dry them. Then grind them through the mill. Process number three. Heat and blanch the same as for number two. Grind them through a meat chopper or the nut butter mill, loosely adjusted. Then cook them in a steam cooker about four hours. When tender, drain, spread on tins, and thoroughly dry them. Then run them through the mill, tightly adjusted. Salted nut butter. Prepare nuts as described in process number one. Sprinkle salt on the kernels when grinding. It is much more preferable to grind the salt in with the nuts than to mix it in the butter. Almond butter. Almond butter is more difficult to make than peanut butter on account of the difficulty in removing the skins. Dry heat does not loosen the skins as it does the peanut. To blanch almonds, soak them in boiling water from two to five minutes. 
then the skins become loose and can be pinched off by pressing on the nut with the thumb and finger the skins will crack and the kernel pop out dry them in a slow oven until they become thoroughly dry and crisp taking care not to burn them then grind them through a loosely adjusted mill place on tins or on a cloth stretched over the stove until perfectly dry then grind then in the nut butter mill tightly adjusted this makes excellent butter if the almonds are first class and sweet brazil nut butter remove the brown woody skins with a sharp knife and put the nuts through the mill they may have to be broken up before they can be ground this butter is very good but somewhat expensive it is cheaper to buy the nuts already shelled peanut meal heat the peanuts sufficiently to remove the skins but do not brown them blanch and look over boil or steam them until tender taking care to have them quite dry when done drain off all the water possible and put them through a colander put on tins suspended over the stove or in a slow oven with the door open taking care not to brown them when perfectly dry and hard grind through the mill loosely adjusted if it is not fine enough spread out to dry some more pass through the mill again more tightly adjusted but if the mill is too tight it will grind it into butter a good plan is to rub it through a flour sieve nut butter for the table put one half the amount of butter required for the meal into a bowl and dilute with an equal quantity of water adding a little of the water at a time beating it thoroughly with a fork until it is smooth and light enough water should be used to make it the proper consistency to spread nicely an egg beater or wire potato masher is an excellent utensil for mixing a little salt can be added if desired nut butter when mixed with water does not keep but a few hours peanut cream cook the peanuts until they just begin to turn brown then make into butter ground as fine as possible emulsify with water until it is the consistency of milk then put in double boiler and cook until it has become as thick as ordinary cream a little salt can be added if desired serve it hot or cold as preferred it can be made into milk by adding a little water End of chapter sixteen chapter seventeen of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton this librivox recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard chapter seventeen miscellaneous quaker city peanut butter mill price of mill four dollars this mill is tinned and has a ball bearing grinds dry wet or oily substances weight ten pounds capacity five pounds peanut butter per hour this is not a cheap meat mill which will not grind fine but a thoroughly practical grinding mill constructed on the same principles as our large mills which have been used so successfully throughout the world for nearly a generation it is a general grinding mill for family use and is sold at a price within the reach of every family the importance of pure food cannot be overestimated the surest way to get it is to do your own grinding thus having the article freshly ground as you use it and avoiding the danger of injurious adulterations this mill is adapted to grinding or pulverizing any of the following articles coffee peanuts or nuts of any kind all wet or oily substances cornmeal cracker dust bread crumbs cracked wheat and oats horseradish and cooked meats spices herbs and roots vanilla beans and pots when mixed with sugar and ground together for flavoring raisins with or without seeds for marmalade coconuts etc peanut butter is said to be superior to cod liver oil for consumptives send for circular containing directions for making peanut butter manufactured by the a w straub company thirty seven thirty seven forty one filbert street philadelphia pennsylvania canal and randolph streets chicago illinois vegetarian cafe 
seven fifty five market street san francisco california vegetarian cooking oil a pure vegetable shortening made by a combination of the best food oil so blended as to give the delicate flavor of pure olive oil a superior salad oil a cheap successful oil for all kinds of shortening half gallon can seventy five cents ten gallon case eleven dollars and fifty cents grape juice and cider our grape juice is made from the best california grapes carefully selected filtered and put up by a process that keeps the juice from fermenting apple cider is made from sound ripe apples cored washed and free from worms quartz forty cents pints twenty five cents apple cider quartz thirty five cents sanitarium food company sanitarium california branch stores san francisco oakland san jose fresno california and salt lake city and provo utah among the recipes in this cookbook are a large number in which sanitas nut foods are used particularly protose and nuttoline a trial of these dishes will convince the most scientific cook and the greatest lover of good things of the important place in the meatless menu occupied by these preparations nut foods were developed by the sanitas nut food company limited battle creek michigan their manufacture is protected by patents issued by the patent bureaus of the united states and foreign countries only after the most rigid scrutiny of the claims presented by the manufacturers sanitas protose and nuttoline are the only successful and scientific meat substitutes on the market sanitas foods are sold by reliable dealers in all parts of the country in case your dealer does not carry them write us for information about our easy way of supplying you direct from factory the sanitarium food company st helena and san francisco california carry a full line of our products wheeling west virginia i have been a vegetarian for several years and as long as i can procure your protose malted nuts and nut butter i have no desire to go back to the flesh pots you shall hear from me again yours very respectfully f h h sanitas nut food co limited battle creek michigan end of chapter seventeen end of the vegetarian cookbook by e g fulton